Israel. What? What? what why? Israelis love us, dude. <laughs> they love us. This week on Backward Compatible, Jim, Doc, and Chris celebrate their 100th episode. First, they look back with a trivial quest through Backward Compatible history. Then they test their knowledge of their co-hosts by guessing each other's answers to choice questions, including a few from podcast guests and contributors. The Backward Compatible 100th episode special starts right now. Will you kick the puppy or kick the kid? Basically, games suck nowadays. It's got Jeff Loeb's dirty fingerprints all over yeah. it, and we don't die because there's the old god baby. I guess I have a problem. I'm, just, I'm actually just impressed by how wrong people are. <laughs> Get that away from my table. I'm Napoleon. Say the word. The casuals. No one has ever successfully explained to me that plot. Nano machines. I just ran around slaying orcs. Our viewership just went up by 40. <laughs> <laughs> you crazy Americans all. Hey, bro. I am the PhD. Christmas is canceled. At its core, Lucky's Tale is a story of greed and vengeance. Oh god, the nightmares. You're gonna get a wide range of reactions. I really think that we're stretching it. Screw games, I'm getting out of this crap. Sean, you've yeah. been so naughty. The promises you made, Sean. Not all humans are rational. I'm trying to get hate mail. I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> What is up, Backward Compatible listeners? Welcome to episode number 100 of the Backward-Compatible.com podcast. One hundo. <laughs> One hundo. As always, I'm Chris, and I'm joined today by Jim. Hey, welcome to One Hundo Special. <laughs> and we're joined by Doc. Triple digit Doc, that's me. And uh, that way more epic than we deserve intro is, of course, courtesy of uh, Nick, uh, who has done all our music for us, so thank you for that, Nick. We deserve to be more epic. What are you talking about? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> it's really awesome. <laughs> it was really awesome. Um, but today we got kind of a free flow special for you guys. We're going to be doing a couple of games amongst ourselves. Uh, we had a couple of write-ins from some of our previous guests. Um, and through those games, we're going to be sort of uh, talking a little bit about the history of the show and kind of where it came from, where we think it might be going. Uh, so it should be a fun episode. Yeah, and remember, if this is your first time at Backward Compatible, you have to fight. <laughs> cool. Well, let's go ahead and jump right in. So the first game we have is um, kind of a trivia, a trivial quest, if you will, through the history of Backward Compatible. <laughs> That's the right word. Uh, by, by the numbers. Mm. <laughs> um, and so I'm going to go and explain to you guys how this is going to work. There are actually three different types of questions, and I've come up with a few um, scoring mm. methods for those. So in the first one, I'm going to be naming something, and there's going to be a number that's the answer. It might be an episode number. It might be a number of things. Oh. Um, your, your goal is to guess the number. Uh, whoever gets closest gets one point. Um, if you get the exact number, you mm. actually get five points. Um, however, you don't want to necessarily guess the same thing as the other person, because if you both guess the same thing and you're both correct, you only get two points. H- how many questions are there in this game? Uh, quite a few. <laughs> now, so, is this closest I, I, without going over? Uh, no, just can, close. Oh, okay. Can I guess the number of points I will score in this game total? Because um, I'm thinking it's going to be between zero and five. Oh, I like that. Let's. I'm leaning towards zero. <laughs> Yeah, see, we can bet on that. We can bet the number of points we want to bet based on how close we get to the actual number of points that we do get, and then the difference can be our spread, which we can apply towards points okay. as a modifier. All right. Okay. <laughs> when, we, when we do final, uh, what are we calling this game? Um, the Trivial Quest Through Backward Compatible when History. When we do final Trivial Quest Through Backward okay. Compatible History. Good. We are game designers. We have Alex Trek for back end <laughs> for that one, don't we? I guess. So if you guys uh, guess the same number and both get it correct, you only get two points instead of the five. Okay. Um, if you guess the same number but it's incorrect, you get no points. Oh. So if you're not really confident, you might want to uh, go ahead and um, guess a different number. The second type of question, I'm going to give a list of, for example, like what are our five longest episodes. Um, you try to guess the items in the list, you get one point for each correct answer. Uh, you get double points if you get them all and in the correct order. And then the third type of question, um, basically it's just a open-ended question. You try to guess the answer first. If you're correct, you get three points. And if you are incorrect, the other person can steal for one point. Excellent. Can I steal right now? Um, if you'd like. 
Oh, well, again. you already answered a question. You said five. Oh, that's true. Is that correct? Is he going to get five points at the end of this game? Uh, I cannot. <laughs> I cannot tell the future. We, we have had time travel episodes uh, before. It's true. I'm not time traveling right now. To be fair, I did say between zero and five. That's true. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and steal <laughs> based on the idea that he's wrong and say that he's going to get six or more. Oh. Okay. As you guys know, we have had uh, four different hosts on the podcast. Um, back in the day, it started off as just me, Jim, and Richard, um, and then Doc joined eventually. Uh, but my first question for you guys is, which of our hosts has the best attendance? Of everyone? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. This is as far as percentage attendance. So between Jim, Doc, Chris, and Richard, who had the uh, most episodes of the ones they were hosts for that they were here. I totally know the answer to this. I'm going to say Chris. I agree. I think it was Chris. Mostly because whenever Chris isn't around to like do the voiceover and recording, we're like, eh, <laughs> let's go get a burger. Yeah, cool. I, I think it is Chris. Well, you guys are both incorrect. What? Wow. Uh, it's actually Doc. Whoa, yeah, I rock. Ninety-five percent attendance. What? Uh, however, uh, I am the um, one of the most episodes. So I've had ninety-three episodes out of ninety-nine. Um, Doc has had seventy-two out of seventy-six, and Jim has had ninety-two out of ninety-nine. Wow. So I beat Jim by one. <laughs> really? Yeah. I would not have guessed that. Mm-hmm. I would have expected you to have gotten at least five more episodes than me. Okay. Wow. Who so knew? Interesting stuff. I did. Not me, apparently. <laughs> Uh, and Richard, Zero to five. Richard in his 29 <laughs> episodes, uh, was here for 10, so he was about 35% attendance. But he was also a very busy dude, and now is in uh, Pennsylvania getting his doctorate. So well, You know, 43.7% of all statistics are made up on the spot. Well, I not, did, not I, these. This I, I spend many hours researching this stuff, so I'm pretty sure it's not made up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next question. I was just playing video games. How many guests have we had on the show? This is not including Doc, Richard, or Nick. Because Nick is kind of part of the crew in a sense. He does all the music. He's been on multiple times. And then, of course, Rich has been on as a guest after he was a host. Doc has been on before he was a host. So not counting those three, what is the number of guests we've had on the show? You mean all independent people or? Uh, single people, yes. So, like, if they come on more than once, we don't count them. That's once. correct. Okay. Yes. And whole people as well. Not, like, just talking heads. <laughs> uh, we did have a lot of talking heads, yeah, we actually. So, so we can't count any <laughs> no, of those. No. Okay. All right. All right, let me see here. Um, now, whose who's question is this? Uh, it's both of yours. Both of ours. So this is the I'm, one. I'm going to try to count in my head. This, this is the one where you're trying to get the um, the number as close as you can. Yeah. Whoever's closest gets the point, or if you're exact, you get um, multiple points. Cool. I'm going to say five. Five guests? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say seven. Yeah, I'm going to say seven. You guys are uh, both very far off. Um <sighs> Jim's going to get the point for being closest. Mm-hmm. I knew it was at least seven. I counted the. <laughs> oh, I forgot the I Thanksgiving remember. episode, didn't I? I missed we a had lot. Like Seventeen oh, people I missed around a lot, the table. <laughs> well, we had we had seven around the table. Yeah, uh, but oh, the man. answer is actually twenty-five. Oh wow! Okay, uh, I'll go ahead and read the list for you real quick. Ben Miro, Will Parsons, Thomas Riccio, Eric Brody, Tyler Tomaseski, Karsten Davis, Bobby Fry, Brianna Turner, Trey Cooper, Derek Manns, Leighton Lucky, Ro Lucky, Lisa Bracken, Phil yeah, Johnson, yeah, Brian, Brian McKittrick, okay. Bradley James, Nathaniel Torson, Andy Howell, Christopher St. Clair, Sarah Christina Wells, Isaac Carth, Alex Swaim, Peter Wanaka, Kara Curley, and M. Joshua. I know all those. I know. People. Every time you you set it off, I was thinking of the episode they were on or yeah. episodes. Yeah. When I was trying to count, I could only come up with seven. So. I know, it's <laughs> terrible. But I still got a point. That's absolutely awful. That's, that's <laughs> Wait, I have, one, I have one point now? Um, yes, you do have one point. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, but, I mean, this is, of course, like, we're just under three years at this point. So a lot of these guests we haven't seen since, you know, year one or year two. That's true. Um, yeah, so, good point. That's true. Uh, it's been a very long, long road. But like yeah, it was good road. It was kind of fun actually going through that list here, kind of you know looking at each of the episodes <laughs> and trying to find like who was listed as featured and um, kind of like it's funny because you sort of have flashbacks to the recording of the episode, mm-hmm. yeah, which is different from I mean listening to it as the host. The same thing happens where you're kind of like picturing like in first person mm-hmm. that memory of doing the show. So it's it's, sim- it's very similar to a nom flashback. I mean, <laughs> right? Similar. About as traumatic, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some of them, yeah. <laughs> All right. In which episode did Doc join as an official member of the crew? Oh, I should know this. Yeah, you should know this. Uh, this should even be fair. It was like 23. He should get negative points if he doesn't get it right. <laughs> I'm going to go with 20... I'm going to go with 24. Okay. I'm going to go with... I know that's very close. Um, I'm going to go with 27. Okay. Uh, Doc was actually exactly spot on. Yes! Oh! Episode 24, uh, when we talked about um, uh, genre for a Kickstarter. Yeah, that's right. So, 
Um, so, Doc, you get five points for being exact. Ding. What? Ah. Oh. <laughs> so now it is uh, Doc five, Jim one. Wait, I won? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. Okay. That's not how that works. <laughs> and how many episodes was Doc a guest before he joined? It was three or four. Um, I'm going to say three. Jim says three? I'll say four, just to be different. Uh, Doc is once again exactly oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's another five points for Doc. All right, sweet. Those were uh, episode seven, storytelling in tabletop versus video games. Um, 13, Shadow of Mordor and emerging gamer subcultures. Uh, 17, the Thanksgiving special 2014. And 19, the holiday special 2014. Oh, yeah. Ah, good memories. So you actually were, uh, you and Will were our most frequent guests uh, prior to you uh, joining us. We were also your coolest guests. Yes. <laughs> and I think that was partially because we, you and Will uh, are in our, you know, sort of frequent uh, RPG groups. I was going to say. And so we were at your yeah. house anyway. <laughs> and so oh, that's true. It's like, hey, can we just like pull out the mic and record an episode real quick? Those and, glory days whenever young Ian yeah. was a regular guest, <laughs> whether he we wanted him to be or not. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> in, some, yeah, in some of the early episodes, you could hear him crying from upstairs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah. yeah. Just turn it into a drinking game. It'll be fun. Yeah, there you go. Um, I think we might have mentioned this before, but the drinking game you don't want to play is um, counting how many times Jim says Hornet Boss in our roundtable on uh, Axiom Verge. Right. <laughs> Quite a lot. Oh, I hated that boss. <laughs> there are many other um, drinking games you don't want to play with our podcast. Hornet Boss. <laughs> yeah, like... Just to get it out. Every time Jim says Batman. <laughs> Which we forbade you from and doing, so and then played a game with you. I know, and then I had, then I had to talk about Batman for the whole entire episode. Yeah, yeah. We, we, the um, the ban was always it kind of like had a time limit built into it, just mm-hmm. sort of expired after. Oh, was that it? Months. We didn't renew the warranty, and yeah. so it, it was all in the fine print. We, we didn't oh, really read it before. I never, we, I never read the terms of service, so <laughs> <laughs> it's on me. <laughs> Um, speaking of which, uh, Jim had a little period after he graduated, and we moved back down to Houston um, for a little while. He was looking for a job. And so there were a number of episodes uh, in the early days when he and I, he would hop on um, Google, and we would host a uh, episode uh, remotely. Um, and so how many episodes did Jim call in from Houston during that time? Oh. See, I should know this. But you I should, won't. yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it's higher than you think it is. It's probably higher than I think. Like eight? I mean, I was there for like eight months. Mm -hmm. Oh, for what it's worth, I am including the lost episode in the count. Oh, are you? Oh, wait a minute. (laughs) So that's plus one. Plus one, okay. Can I answer answer X plus one where X is the correct answer minus the one that you just gave us? (laughs) (laughs) I I, I didn't (laughs) say that it was in this range. Final answer, lucky 13. (laughs) Hmm. I'm going to say 15. 15? Uh, Doc is closer. The, num- the answer is 12. Oh, wow. so close. Wow. It was episodes 8, 9, 10, 13, 14, um, 15, which is the last episode. Um, 16, 17, 18, you were here in person for the holiday special, which was 19. I already gave away this one, but the last episode was 15. Um, it kind of eventually evolved into episode 69, much later. Uh, we were talking about uh, romance and relationships in games, right. specifically around right. Bioware and how they were handling right. it. Um, but we got about... 75% through the podcast and the computer I was using uh, crashed. Chris, for bonus <laughs> points, do you remember my stance on Bioware romance and games? You're not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> two, two points to the host. Two points to the host. <laughs> the host is beating me. <laughs> Speaking of the early days, having Richard around, which episode was Richard's send-off when he moved to um, Pennsylvania? Oh, yeah. I guess 21. Well, let's see. He did, like, 23 episodes, though. So, I'm going to say 23. You are closer. Um, the answer is 29. Oh. Next question. In which episode did we introduce our opening segments format? Oh, yeah. That was awesome. That is awesome. I'm going to say it was about 15 or 20 episodes into um, me joining the show. So, I'm going to say about episode 44. Let's go with 46. That just sounds right in my head. I'm going to go with 39. 39? You're closer. Uh, it was actually 30. Really? It was right after we, we had the send-off with Richard, so we were talking at one point about um, how the site was going in a different direction, and we kind of retooled the that. podcast. Yeah, right, okay. Right. Um, and so uh, we were still kind of working out the kinks, but that was the first episode in which we had you know the button mosh and all these other opening segments prior to the media topic of discussion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And then, of course, before that, you know, just a little tidbit on the history of the show, we were much more free-flow, 
much more free form, I should say. Um, kind of like right now. <laughs> yeah. We uh, basically just like sort of sat down and we had a topic that we knew we were going to talk about, but we'd often have like, you know, we I think we called them icebreakers back then. Um, right. Where we just right. sort of like have a little icebreaker conversation or a little game we would play and then we go into the talk, but it was all very seamless and organic. Um, yeah, that's a word for it. <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll steer, steer away from uh, disorganized and um, rambly. But, uh. We also called that season one, and I think yeah. episode 30 was about when we started season two. Yep. Mm. Although we never really – we the, the use of seasons has always been kind of informal. We've it never it really, truly has, yeah. yeah. Honestly, I, I think I embraced that more for the – uh, some of the YouTube stuff because mm-hmm. I, I had archived the first couple of seasons on YouTube. Oh, yeah, because you uh, have the playlists with kind I of. I do, yeah. yeah. I've got them in, in playlists in that format. So um, what I need to do is get back up and, and archive season three. Mm-hmm. So coming soon, <laughs> season three to YouTube. And I, I think I even had on the website it set up a little differently where some of our really early episodes are just all like put into a couple of different pages. Yeah, yeah. we have a tab called BC Classic on right. the website. Right, right. That's right, yeah. Uh, we also used to write uh, articles on our website. Um, it actually started off primarily as a, a blog that we'd have several people contributing to. Um, and then the podcast was actually just a supplemental thing on top of that. So the, the main push of the site was the written content with the podcast being just an extra I, feature. I disagree with that. I <laughs> do distinctly recall us going uh, with the original pitch idea mm-hmm. Um, which was originally in uh, Doc's class. It was in my office. It was in your office, and it was after it was during the ARG class, mm-hmm. Civil History, and it was myself, uh, Chris, mm-hmm. Richard, and, and Ben. ben. Yeah. And Ben was kind of a lost member who did show up for and guest star in a couple of episodes. Yeah, yeah. He also was infamous for the uh, lost episode zero, which yeah. I still have, <laughs> and yeah, is as a treat for everyone. <laughs> episode one hundred, it will be going out on the website. Oh boy. <laughs> Brilliant. Excellent. Um, Actually, no, I can't find it. I literally okay. I lost it a while ago. It is, but, it is. but the fun part is I like to threaten Chris with, with that. And so I'm, at episode 100, I would have put his mind at ease. I don't even know where the heck it is. <laughs> but I did listen to it before. I know I know Doc did. It was quite rough. It was, yeah. Um, what happened was... Saucy. We, we was just, saucy. Yes, and we decided to go to... Um, well, first, the pitch. So we went to Doc's office. We pitched the concept about how we had all these different views. We wanted to write articles, but also we... The podcast was a part of that push to have four different voices coming from different perspectives. Right. Um, but our first episode, we decided to record it in the Fillmore Pub. Mm-hmm. Um, no, there was still plenty of patrons in the in the pub. Mm-hmm. We were we were they were serving us drinks and we were drinking those drinks. <laughs> so it was basically about probably about like two hour podcast. Maybe it was pretty yeah, long. Yeah, too. it was a long one. So about a two hour podcast in which it would have been uh, rated R. It was a sure. genuine podcast. It was, it was pub-cast. a podcast. Yeah, yes. it really yeah. was. That's actually what the original, um, even in episode one, we talk about how we were kind of going for a podcast sort of thing where it was just meant to be free flow and open ended. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I think I actually had a, Richard had a cider in his fridge that he let me have during that first episode. So <gasps> Scandalous. <laughs> Scandalous. Right, and we would talk about what we were drinking. Yeah. I remember that. We did that for the first maybe like five episodes before then, we dropped it, yeah, yeah. if that many. Mm-hmm. It wasn't many where we actually did that. So when these guys sobered up is whenever they actually called me. To be- <laughs> <laughs> well, you, like I said, the first time you were a guest, we just happened to be at your place. And it's we're true. like, hey, we need to record a podcast, and you guys are here, so let's go in and do that. So, uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh. Uh, because I remember that when we first started off, too, we tried to make sure that um, – we recorded when all three of the hosts were available, but then whenever we had one who had to drop out, uh, we would bring in a substitute, um, base, a guest as a substitute. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's when we had uh, Ben on the first time. He was a substitute for Richard. Um, we had you on when someone wasn't able to make it that first time. So, Speaking of uh, working out some of the kinks, in how many episodes have we had mic malfunctions? This isn't just bad background noise. This isn't like kind of a little wateriness that happens when we try to do noise reduction. This is just like... For some reason or another, the mic wasn't working or the input was incorrect or something like that. And uh, I think we apologized for it a couple times, and one time we just sort of let it go and just uh, ignored it. Are you, are you counting the lost episode that didn't even get recorded? Uh, that's not a mic malfunction. That's just the lost episode. Okay. I'm going to say 12. Wow, that's high. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I think it's more like four. Doc is closer. Um, we had three episodes. Oh, okay. There really? Was, uh, yeah. I've li- there's plenty. Last there's plenty that I've listened, and I'm like, <laughs> Chris, you just didn't do your job editing or mark this one down. <laughs> well, uh, if you go back and listen to these, you'll, <laughs> see, you'll, you'll see what we mean. Um, episode four, episodic and appointment gaming. Uh, that was our first one where we had uh, some pretty bad mic mm-hmm. issues. Mm-hmm. Um, 27, a roundtable discussion on Sherlock Holmes. 
um, in 97, the roundtable discussion, Batman, the Telltale series. Oh, yeah. Uh, that one was actually not as bad as the others. I, was, yeah, I listened to that one. I didn't think it was that bad. It's just, I it's, still don't know what happened yeah. there. That was, that was, that was very It definitely weird. sounded weird, but I didn't really think it sounded that bad. It sounded, like it, You could still yeah. listen to it. It, it, sounded, was, it sounded kind of bit crushed. Yeah. And I think what might have happened is maybe some filter or something got applied or the bit rate got reduced while we're recording. You know what happened? They gave us that option, you know, click X to break the podcast, and we just hit X. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It happens all the time. Yeah. So, well, you know, 3%. You're, you're supposed to hit square to not break the podcast. <laughs> yeah. We hit X. 3% <laughs> is not that bad. I mean, that's a 97% success rate. That's A plus no matter what school you're oh, going that's, to. Oh, that's much better than I expected. I, I mean, so. you heard me. I guessed way <laughs> Now, if you're counting the ones where we had bad background noise, and that's a much higher number. <laughs> yeah. I didn't bother to count that. <laughs> that's, that's 98, 99 of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, moving a little bit away from the uh, audio aspect, um, if you take a look at our SoundCloud and our website, you'll notice that we have different cover art for each of the episodes. Yes, we do. Um, how many different art styles have we used for our podcast covers? Well, that's kind of subjective. This doesn't count uh, color swaps. Oh, you mean, I'm say you mean four. major design? I'm yes. just going to say four. I got my answer. Uh, okay. Threw it out there. And I'm going to go with three, not including episode 100 and sort of the new. Yeah, this is all zero, or not zero, one through 99. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to say three. Three? Three different art styles. Uh, Jim is spot on. It's four. Ah. We had the uh, the first one that wasn't very long-lived. This is back when we had our original logo with the two circles, the B and the C buttons. Yeah, basically. the rainbow the, one. Basically. It's the, oh, the, that. Well, we had an, the orange and, uh, mm-hmm. the orange like and orange blue, and blue for the podcast, color scheme. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we moved on to um, kind of a blue on gray color scheme. Yeah, that's when we got um, the website. Too. That, that's when we got the logo redesign. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, when we actually at 30 at that same time we sort of changed up our format we switched to the um, sort of like splashy almost graffiti style looking one mm-hmm. on uh, yeah. white mm-hmm. that um, one's my favorite and then later on we also switched to our, our, our current one is the um, blue with the letters and you have the images inside the letters mm-hmm. which is very excellent but I, I and I, I kind of knew that because I did a bunch of website updates recently <laughs> so it was kind of uh, unfair that's why I mean like a four <laughs> But see, I like I like the hand drawn style of I'm our cheap. faces. Mm. I used that on my Facebook profile for a long time. So that, that was, was pretty cool. That's my favorite image. Mm-hmm. As we mentioned earlier, uh, my brother Nick uh, Kruger does all the music for the show, um, including the opening theme. Um, so the qu- next question is: How many different versions of our opening theme have appeared in the show? Are we counting? This counts holidays and sort of special episodes. No, no, no. Does it count 100? Oh. Uh, it doesn't count 100. doesn't this count 100. Is, this is 1 through 99. Okay. So that's, yeah, that's a good distinction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say 7. 7? Uh, hmm. Because we've had, like, Halloween. We've had Christmas, holiday. Um, the regular one has been three or four different versions. So I'm going with 7. I'm going to say 6. 6? Doc is closer. <sighs> Um, it's actually nine. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, wow. There have been uh, three versions of the main theme. Um, there have been two versions of the Halloween special. Oh, really? Uh, two versions of Christmas. Uh, Thanksgiving, we've used the same one every time. And then 69. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah 69. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> the, uh, the After Dark episode. Uh, next that question. Wow, wow, wow. Theme, yeah. Uh, those of you who have listened to the podcast know that, you know, this is something that happens in natural conversation, that uh, you sometimes go back to the same points over and over again. So yeah. how many times has Fall Out been brought up on the show? Well, that's just me. <laughs> this is a joke question. I didn't actually bother to count that. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> 75. A, a lot. A lot. <laughs> the, the, the real question is how many times did it come up in a positive light? Versus how many times it in the, the ratio of positive oh, wow. to negative fallout? Because I know I've I have, I've had some stern. I'm a huge fan of the series, yeah, but I've also are. had some really stern things to Me say too. about some of the newer ones and some of the direction that that I, I feel like yeah. Bethesda's yeah, yeah. gone. So, yeah, four, oh, yeah, four, four, mm-hmm. four exactly. Um, three had plenty of problems with it as well. I thought New Vegas was kind of a good return to form in a way, mm-hmm. but. So early on in the site, we had these round tables. Uh, the idea was that all three of the crew members would go and play a video game, mm. uh, and then we would sort of have this back and forth discussion. It was actually written in the blog, uh, where we would kind of have a little bit of an outline, but then we kind of have each person take the points that they wanted to hit on. And so, um, for example, Richard might talk a little bit about you know this particular mechanic, and then Jim would hop on and sort of say the thing that kind of leads from that, mm-hmm. and then I would jump on and say something else. Um, so that was a format that we had on the blog. But eventually, we actually turned it into an audio form uh, for the podcast after we stopped doing articles. Oh, and an interesting fact about that is that we, we started doing that, um, the roundtable where we'd go back and forth and talk about a review. And then within, I think it was like 
three weeks or something, Richard noticed that Polygon straight up jacked our idea and had it <laughs> on their site for the seriously like because he, and he would follow he follow, followed Polygon re- mm-hmm. norm, like regularly, so he would have known if they had been doing it beforehand. And he oh, said after funny. like three weeks of us you know doing it, he goes, look, they're doing they they straight <laughs> up just took our idea and are, and are running with it. Somehow I I. I Rather doubt they actually were aware enough of us to oh, see no, our idea. No, no, no. It was they a collective were. unconscious, man. No, they they were aware of us. <laughs> Maybe loyal loyal followers of the podcast, <laughs> mm-hmm. as Just like Uncle a, Fergus. Yeah, Uncle Fergus and Blizzard, and uh, <laughs> eventually you're gonna get to the question where it's like, how many how many um, U.S. presidents have supported this podcast? And then we're gonna have to question: Do you mean sitting presidents or former presidents? Yeah. Like, where where's the distinction there? Because so many of them have. Yeah. Uh, which episode was our first audio roundtable? Ooh. Oh, okay. What was our first audio roundtable? Do you remember, Jim? The, the first game we did as a roundtable. That was an audio roundtable. Right, um, right. I want to say it was the first, wa- the first Walking Dead. You know, that sounds right. Which would make it around episode 30. No. Well, was, was uh, I a guest? I don't think I was a guest for that one. I don't I think, think I was a host by then. So, so that would make it episode. Wait, I don't, know if, I don't know if you were in the first audio roundtable. Really? I'm not so sure. Well, Maybe you were. Maybe you were, but you were a guest. I don't know if you were a host at that point. Oh, wow. I don't remember. <laughs> well, he just read them all. Were you paying I attention? Remember, I, I remember our, um, <laughs> our first, our, I believe our first actual like written round table. I know we did a round table on Strider that mm-hmm. we wrote down. Because I, so, I remember, because I, I was still doing the website mm-hmm. stuff, and I remember putting all the images on there and trying to lay everything out. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if that was our first round table. Our first written round table was Wolfenstein. That's right. Yeah. Um, That's yeah. right. It was uh, the new new order. The new order, which we all liked, and, mm-hmm. and I thought I, I still like that game. Yeah. It's a good game. It's a really good game. I remember that, and we I'm also did, that one um, out. We also did a written one on the Wolf Among Us. Mm-hmm. Um, we did Strider. Yeah. Um, we also did. Was it Gauntlet? Was that the name of it? Um, yeah, we did. We did. Um, uh, it was the new Gauntlet that came mm-hmm. out. It was just called Gauntlet. And yeah. We all played it together mm-hmm. beforehand. Yeah. But I guess we. You're right. We we didn't do an audio one on that one either. Nope. 33 is my answer. 33 is your wow. answer? Did you look it up? No. <laughs> um, I'm going to say 32. 32? Um, you were closer. It was episode 27. Oh, okay. um, Sherlock Holmes, Crimes and Punishments. Really? That oh, was right. Our first one? Yep. I didn't know that was our first audio. Oh. It's an interesting game, too. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> That's a great episode to go back and, and catch because it, it was also we talked about. It was also one of our ones with poor audio quality. Well, so. Of course. Yeah, yeah. So do. do sure um, Bear in mind, if you go back and listen to that one, the content is Wait. good, but the uh, <laughs> might be a little bit difficult to listen so to. So out of the three episodes that had poor audio quality, two of them are roundtables. Yep. Okay. Mm, what Sense, does it mean? Sensing a trend. Yeah. <laughs> are you going to ask us when was the first time we actually recorded at a roundtable and where that roundtable was? I know the answer to that. <laughs> Doc knows the answer to that. Yeah, that that, might, that might come up a little bit later. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of roundtables, okay. uh, how many audio roundtables have we had? Five. Five. Only five. It's got. It feels like it's got to be more than five. But I can't. I can't really think of that many. Have we really not had that many after starting starting then? Like well, seventy we have to, episodes. We have to buy the game. All play the game. It takes time. It's because you guys have just not been playing the games that I'm picking. That's I know. <laughs> if, if we were if we were more hardcore with our gaming on our gaming podcast, that's had a hundred episodes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Solely because I believe in us, I'm going to say six. Six. Uh, you're closer. It is nine. Ah, oh, yes. Yes. Really? All right. Faith. They were episode 27, Sherlock Holmes. Uh-huh. Uh, 33, Transistor. Oh, yeah. Transistor. Remember that one. Uh, 39. What about the man who dresses like a nun? <laughs> yes. <laughs> 39, Axiom Verge. Mm-hmm. I remember who that could forget too? Axiom yeah, Verge? Yeah, and I, we one. just talked about We referenced that earlier. Yeah. Born and Boss. Uh, 48, Fire Emblem Awakening. Sure. I didn't remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> it was mainly. Uh, Doc. I, I chose to forget yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah. That was me. I played like an half I play, an hour. I played a lot like, of it though. Yeah, rocks. I just don't remember the show. I don't remember doing the round yeah. table. Okay. Um, it was. Uh, we had a uh, fifty-three season two of The Walking Dead. Yeah. Uh, sixty-eight. Disappointed in general. <laughs> it really was. Uh, sixty-eight Shovel Knight. All right. Yeah. Yeah, we did do Shovel Knight. Mm-hmm. Seventy-three Gunpoint. Oh, I totally oh forgot good that old one. Gunpoint. I totally forgot how that we, one. How, yeah. 93, Final Fantasy 15. Right. And 97, Telltale's Batman. Oh, was that, was that a round table? <laughs> it, yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> yeah, Eric was in there for that. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's right. And, of course, but yeah, I, I wasn't you really played, thinking... You played it. I know. A good, I did. Mount, a good bit of I wasn't, it. I wasn't thinking of Batman as, mm-hmm. as a round table, but of course it was. Batman was, yeah. yeah. Of course it was. It's just we played it together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That made it more fun, though. Yeah, it made, that was excellent. Made it we need to do that again. Sure. There's other experiences, other games like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Now we're getting into some uh, some fun kind of uh, trivia territory. Oh, trivia round. Um, so this actually isn't in our podcast feed. Um, if you subscribe to us on iTunes, you won't have seen these, but you'll see them on our site and on SoundCloud. Uh, how that would many... be backward-compatible.com. Yes, yes, and it's fully updated with all of our old catalog. Excellent. Mm. We still need to update the about page and some other stuff no. too, but no, it's perfect as it is. Nobody goes there anyway. I'm so. thinking total reboot on the website. How about what? That? Yeah, doesn't that sound like a, a great thing for you guys? No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yes, yeah, totally. Let's just redesign it all. Let's not. No. So, uh, how many episodes no. of bonus compatible have there been? No, quite a few actually. I'm going to go with about twenty. Mm. Really, I'm going to say fifteen. You're closer. Uh, there have been ten. Is oh, all? yep. Okay. Oh. Um, I think partially because we've started to, um, it, it sort of started off as like almost a, um, I don't want to use the term dump, but <laughs> it's, it's basically where we put our content from episodes where we went too long and we wanted to trim them down, but we still yeah. thought it was kind of interesting to listen to. Mm-hmm. Um, so they range anywhere from like, you know, four minutes to 15, give or take. Mm-hmm. Um, Some of my favorite content of all is actually in the bonus compatibles. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because it, it's so off topic and so random, it just feels a little bit more, I don't know, from the heart. Mm-hmm. That's why. That's why. So, so my recommendation, and I've talked to Chris going forward, is not to do bonus compatibles anymore, mm-hmm. and just heretic. It, it, yeah. Well, if we feel because no one's going to listen to them, really. I mean, that's the truth of it. They're there, but because they're more difficult to get to, and they're so short. Typically, people aren't going to like, oh, I'm listening to this 15-minute thing. And remember, that email is inbox at backward-compatible.com, and uh, your header should be Jim Bag. That's right, Jim Bag. Um, that, that's where all my hate mail goes. Yeah. Plenty of it. Um, some of it well deserved. This time, not. I'm actually trying to you know, make a good point. I think or I, I like... that one guy who agrees with Jim, remember, it's Woke Jim. <laughs> woke, yes, Woke Jim. So, and woke and Jim, I know that one guy actually... that agrees with me because that's me. <laughs> <laughs> right in my own my own. I've been getting Jim those emails, woke. Jim. I understand. <laughs> Hashtag Woke Jim actually, unfortunately, didn't make the cut last time. Oh. Oh. Um, but I think that our, our bonus compatible uh, content, if we feel like we're talking about it and if, like, like Doc's saying, oh, this is really interesting – my my suggestion going forward is if we feel like it's interesting or entertaining in some way, we just leave it in the show, even if it makes it longer. If we feel like no, we need to cut this because it's just it's not good enough or not you know quality enough, then we just go ahead and cut it. You know, we don't we just pick one or the other. Mm-hmm. I know it's hard and sometimes people's stuff gets cut, but what are you gonna do? Well, I know what I would do. Hmm. I would cut oh. this part out and put it into a bonus compatible. That wasn't, that wasn't even the idea. Actually, no. Now I take it back. Because yeah. what we actually were going to do is we're going to save a bunch of them and then put them on like a whole like shit, like a and so clip like, show. We, we would have like, uh, rather than having the intermittent bonus compatibles, we just and that's have the other them, idea. Like, have an outtake yeah. episode. That's the other idea. Yeah. I like, like an outtake that. episode. And so even if it's not like a main part of the cast, we actually do have, um, this actually leads into our next question, yeah. the player codex, mm-hmm. which is kind of our non-podcast content that we produce. Um and that is actually, we've made it so those are actually show up in our RSS feed. So yeah. both on our SoundCloud and on our iTunes, you can find these talks, and they're kind of like, you know, they, they range in you know scope and length and you know, how many of us are on there. Speaking of the Codex stuff, we've, we've done some Codex audio episodes, mm-hmm. yeah. which we, sh- we should probably do on occasion again. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, we had some good ones. We had a really good Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. Codex. Is the next question? How many yep. audio? How, how many player Codex entries do we have uh, in our podcast feed? I'm going to say oh. eight. In our podcast feed, see that's the trick, because mm-hmm. it was just player codex, and it would involve uh, written content as well. Right, but no, this is the audio feed, mm-hmm. so I'm going to say eight. I just don't think it's that many. I'm going to go seven. Uh, spot on. Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm out of the I'm out of the doldrums uh, now. I'm over ten. <laughs> um, okay. So, what is the score right now, actually, between the two of you guys? I, I I have thirteen, I think, but I think I lost count at some point. So maybe I. <laughs> I don't think I've gotten a question right since I got the two. So, <laughs> so then you would I'm be at 10, ten. Then okay, gotcha. Um, but no, I think you got one right. Yeah, I think you got Did a couple I? a couple ones. We'll call it eleven. <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, so we had seven uh, player codex entries right now in the in the feed. Um, open worlds, the relevance of tabletop RPGs in the digital age. That's uh, an audio essay that I did. Um, we have Doc's audio essay, Authenticity versus Validity, a new approach to video game design. Everything I say hinges upon the content of that essay. So if you have not listened to that essay, you should stop listening to me. Wait, no, <laughs> you should go listen to that and then continue listening. <laughs> that's it. That's what it is. I think it's better. Um, the Eden Program Postmortem, uh, where we talked about um, favorites, the actually. series we did on um, on Roll With It. That was our first Roll With It series, actually. Yeah. Um, 
We have Titan's Grave Critical Analysis. That was oh. basically me and Doc talking about Titan's Grave. That was life. a lot of fun. You know, that, mm-hmm. that's a show worth worth watching. Mm-hmm. If you've not well, gone back and watched that show, that is a great self-contained little show. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thank Paul- you, Will Wheaton, for making mm-hmm. our lives better. <laughs> Uh, Polycraft World interview. Uh, that's when we had uh, Jen Tidwell on to talk about uh, Polycraft World, which yeah. was uh, UTD's um, sort of mechanical and chemical um, expansion to Minecraft. Mm. Megalomania, an interview with Last Minute Games. Oh, yeah. That's when we had the Last Minute Games. That game got on, really so. good. Yeah. yeah it, that, is, that was a fantastic game. Uh, and that actually did get kickstarted successfully. Yeah, so yeah. Um, they'll be, they're still working on that, I believe, and they'll be shipping it out. I'm not sure exactly when, but fairly soon. And then, of course, like you mentioned, Jim, Metal Gear, discussing the legend. Um, that's when we had you and me just talked at length about the Metal Gear franchise. Mm-hmm. Fun fact, I was in the room during that recording. <laughs> yes. Yes, you were in the room. Doing he, something else and thinking, what nerds you guys He was actually <laughs> hiding in a cardboard box. <laughs> we didn't know we didn't <laughs> he was there at all. There at all. <laughs> no idea. Bing. All right. Speaking of which, how many different recording locations have we used? Uh, this is not counting calls in from home, but this is places where um, we have actually like sort of sat down to record an episode. Now, are you counting different rooms or different buildings? Buildings. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's see. I'm going to say four. It's got to be at least. Wait, no, no. Uh, I take that back. Mm-hmm. Six. Six. Really? Wait. I may not. Seven. Seven. I may not know all of your recording. I'm going to go seven. Because I wasn't a part of all of them. Mm, good point. I'm going to go seven, then I'm going to name it after this. And if I'm, so, so just to make sure what I'm saying. I have mm-hmm. faith in Jim enough to believe that he's got this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I will agree that it is seven. Okay. Um, I mean, eight. Mm-hmm. Eight. It was eight. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? All right. So I will mention that because you guys picked the same number, uh, that kicks in special rules. <gasps> special rules. So if you're both correct, you both get two points. Uh, if you're both incorrect, you get no points. Oh. Uh, the answer is nine. Really? Yep. Um, See, I told you it was eight. <laughs> Edited, so so, so here, here are the ones that I remember, okay. and you tell me the ones I missed. Okay. So, because um, it's more than I, I thought. Mm-hmm. We recorded the Fillmore Pub. Mm-hmm. I knew that one. Um, A-Tech uh, building. Mm-hmm. I knew that. Doc's house. Knew that. Here at the church. Yeah. Over at my apartment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Over at your apartment. Yeah. Over at Richard's place. Uh-huh. That's how I got seven. I moved. I had another house. You're right, you mm-hmm. did. So that'd be eight. Yeah. You are absolutely right. That's eight. But mm-hmm. what's the ninth one? Okay, so actually I wasn't counting my apartment because we've met in my apartment, but we've never recorded there. We did record something there. I don't know if it was a – it may not have been a, a po- uh, an actual podcast episode. We it wasn't a podcast. There. It wasn't? No. Because I actually went through each of the episodes and I was recording oh, really? where we actually okay. recorded them. Um, what I've got here is Richard's apartment. That was the, the original place. And you can hear in the early episodes the air conditioner that was right next to the table we recorded at. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, the no, Fillmore Pub. Yeah, that, no, that was the original place because that was episode zero. That was episode zero, but that okay. was also episodes four and five, I would yeah, say. Yeah, we did have another episode there. Like uh, Ben's house. We actually visited Ben once, and that's when you called in. Um, oh. But Ben and I were at his place. That's right. I hadn't actually gone. Okay. Oh, you weren't there? I you wasn't actually remember. physically there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the Games and Learning Lab at UTD, uh, where I used to work, and I was able to uh, borrow during off hours that office to record. Yeah, but um, wasn't that in the A-Tech building? It was in the A-Tech building. We're counting that as A-Tech building. It's, it's specifically that. Okay, I guess. Yeah, but we are counting that as A-Tech building. Uh, Doc's Richardson House. Yeah. And then Doc's Garland House. Right. Uh, Jim's apartment. Uh, Lisa's office. Oh, that's right. Okay. Um, oh, you didn't say that. I didn't say that. Oh, see, I thought that. I, yeah, I thought I thought it in my head, and I didn't say it mm-hmm. out loud. And then, of course, Prairie Creek Baptist Church, where yeah, we are now. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. And uh, it's nice and quiet here on Sunday afternoons, and that's why we uh, have been using this for a little while. It's our best sound quality. I so. agree. Yeah. Thank you, Prairie Creek Baptist Church, for letting us use your facilities. Indeed. Uh, and for the record, uh, the, the opinions have. expressed on this podcast <laughs> do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of Prairie Creek, ba- Prairie Creek Baptist Church or their staff. Yeah, especially with Jim swears. <laughs> I try to keep it to a, a minimum. <laughs> All right. We're going to go ahead and move on now to um, rule set number two. So I'm going to uh, – I've got a few lists here. Um, you're gonna, both of you are going to try to guess the items in the list. You're allowed to agree on things. Um, and you get one point for each correct answer. Uh, if you get them all and all in the correct order, as, as applies, you will get double points. First question, which three guests have appeared the most times? This is not counting uh, past or future hosts. Guests. Not counting past or future hosts. Mm-hmm. And not counting Nick, like I said. And not so, counting... so you're saying there are three guests who've appeared the exact same number of times? Uh, no, just the most times. Do we need to say their names? Like, yes. are you going to give us... 
Um, no, the, their names. Um, oh, you're giving us their names. No, you're going to guess okay. the names of the top. Oh, three. you're saying what are the top three? Mm-hmm. But we have to have put them in order. Mm-hmm. Now you don't have to have them in order, but if you do get them all and in order, then you get double points. Okay, so Will Parsons. Yeah, obviously, is totally... obviously Will is, is yeah. up there, mm-hmm. but I'm trying to think of the others. Uh, could it be? Could it be Brian? Now, are you are you counting roll with it or just no, just, just podcast? Just the okay. podcast. Not, not counting roll with it. It was maybe. Will, How many Will, times was Nathaniel on? Once or twice? At least two, but I don't think yeah. more than three. I, I think it might be Will, Phil, and Brian. It's true because Phil was on at least twice. That might be my, my that might be my guess. But, but although I don't know how many Brian Bradley, was actually on. Bradley James has been on two only, times. Three only times? twice. Only twice, I think. Ooh. Only twice, I think. No. Well. Maybe, no, maybe three. No, I think only twice. How, but Brian, see, the problem is that Brian's been on with us a lot, but all, most of them were not actual right. podcast episodes. So it's really yeah. hard to he's, tell he's apart. He's been on like every role with it, right? And, so he's been and, on and several a bunch episodes because he was yes. our unplugged guy. So he's been he's been on a, he's actually been in terms of contributors to to the podcast or to just backward compatible in general and mm-hmm. are not isn't a host, but he's been probably number one. In terms of just contributing, you hear that, Brian? You're number one. Yeah, you're number one in our heart, Brian. <laughs> but in terms of actual episode appearances, I think it may have only been a couple. Yeah. Okay. So my my answer is going to be Will Parsons, mm-hmm. Bradley James, and wait, are we counting Ben as a as a or as a former host or not? So, uh, no. And, and per the, Ben is not a former no. host. And, and per the per the previous rules, am I am I a potential guest? Uh, no, he said no, no because by you're a future okay, host. Okay, mm-hmm. I got gotcha. you. Ben Ben has always appeared as a guest because he dropped out after uh, oh, was or he before in a, before was he three episode episodes. One. Maybe I'm going to say Will Phil and Ben. Will Phil Ben. Will Will Phil Ben. <laughs> and I'll go with uh, Will Bradley and Nathaniel. Okay. Number one, Will Parsons at yeah. episodes. Yeah, we, we both got that one. Uh, Eric Brody at five. Oh whoa! Okay. Wow. I didn't realize it was that many for Eric. I must have missed one or two of those. Those were some in the early days. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's right. Because that. he was in. Oh, you're, yeah. Because he was in some really early on, and then mm-hmm. we didn't have him on for a long time, and mm-hmm. then he came back. Yep. And then he was on like two in a row, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. And then uh, Brian McKittrick at four. Oh, we should have said Brian. I did say Brian. No, you didn't. You, I totally you, did. <laughs> edit that out. Edit that out. <laughs> Make me sound smarter. So I got two out of three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you did. Yeah. So right. two points to Doc. One point to Woo! Jim. How many times has Brian been on? Uh, four. Four times. Four. Um, so for the record, is Ben three. Then uh, let me pull up the list again. Uh, ben was on twice. Oh, I thought he uh, was on three. Not, not counting episode zero. Uh, see, you you keep not counting episode zero. <laughs> episode zero happened. <laughs> Deal with it. It was there. We have a recording of it. I'm finding that recording. It's going. It's going. It's up. I, I, I'm actually not inherently opposed to putting it up, but <laughs> just with the with the warning that if you're used to our format, you probably will not recognize <laughs> actually, the, the explicit content. I just, I just want yeah. it to be recognized. Well, technically, our podcast does have the e-label on it, just it because they what they recommend is, especially on iTunes, they say if there's anything that you would kind of count as PG-13, um, which is actually most of our episodes when you really get down to it, mm. um, then you should put explicit e on it. E is for so. everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Explicit is for everyone. <laughs> um, according to SoundCloud, what are our top five most played episodes? Um, and I will accept just like the, the topic. I just want you to have to say the specific number. But And we have to name how many of them? Uh, there are five. Oh, the top five? Yes. Okay. Wow. Definitely one of them is... Uh, I've given up trying to score this. I'm just going to talk this through with Doc. <laughs> so definitely one of ours is that one where um, Phil came on to talk about Lucky's Tale. I would say so. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure that the one. VR episode. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that sure that one cracked 100. Mm-hmm. Um, so that one's up there. Not episode 69. No, but I don't think it did bad either. I think it had about 69 viewers. <laughs> <laughs> I, and then if we shut well, it down, just make yeah, sure we, we shut it down. down. Well, obviously, obviously, it was the um, first episode I was on, so episode thirty. <laughs> like that, that's got to be our best one ever. Might have been. I think yeah. there was there was one where I believe Richard came on. It was like the first time we had him back. Um, yeah, we had this after he was gone. Mm-hmm. You don't know Dick. No, no, it was Dick Move. Dick Move. Dick move that's though. what it was. Yeah, because he, he moved too. Because he moved. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That's right. But anyway, that one. That, <laughs> that's why we get the evil. That was the dumbest thing. Yeah, but that one where, where <laughs> he comes Jim's idea where was. he comes back. That yeah, was definitely. One. <laughs> but when he, when he comes back, that episode, there, I'm pretty certain mm. 
was was also another one that was well listened to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these these are these are just wild guesses, by well, sort of wild guesses. Let me think. Um, I'm gonna go with some of our roundtables. I think some of our roundtables are, are, are good. Which one in particular? Oh, I've already put up two guesses. Yeah. It's hard for me to. I see all the numbers, but they just all kind of blend together after a while. Now we're only counting podcast episodes, right? Yes. Okay. How about uh, how about our in, year in review mm-hmm. for 2016, the one we recently just put up? Because that was a great episode. Mm-hmm. And if people didn't listen to that one... I'm going to say the, the one where... Um, the recent one where Eric came on, I'm going to include that one, mm-hmm. um, where he was talking about uh, marketing strategy and all that. Mm-hmm. I'll throw that one in there. And I'll also include uh, the first Thanksgiving special that we had, that w- we had a whole bunch of guests, because I'm just going to assume mm-hmm. that because we had so many people, they, they, they all said, shared it. They said something. They shared it with somebody, mm-hmm. at least one other person... You know, it's got to do something for us. Mm-hmm. So there we go. There's my five. Okay. Uh, the top five, and I'm going to count up to number one. Okay. Good. So number five, uh, Theater, Mythology, and Ritual in the Modern Age. Really? That was featuring uh, Tom Riccio. Oh, that doesn't surprise me at all. Mm-hmm. That's a great episode, actually. How, how, how many? Oh, we don't really know. Um, I mean, we sort of do, but I, it's I don't like, have the numbers handy. Yeah. 65, Lucky's Tale, VR Game Development, Phil yeah, Johnson. Yeah, I knew that would be in there somewhere. And number three, episode number 28, Theoretical Models for Time Travel, Feet Will Parsons. Oh, totally. Right. Okay. Uh, number two, uh, episode 41, Games and Learning, Feet Andy Howell. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Wow, mm-hmm. fantastic. And at number one uh, was episode 40, Non-Traditional Tabletop RPGs Revisited, featuring Brian McKittrick. Oh, yeah. I think that one is because we uh, we tagged a bunch of indie devs in that one. And <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, I remember that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember that. I, I was tweeting out a whole bunch of them, and some of them retweeted back. We also talked a little bit about Exploding Kittens, which might have had something to do with it. That's true. Yeah, true. W- worthy of it, I think, is that... The, that was a two-parter. We did we did two parts. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't explicitly a two-parter, but we did have the the topic came up before, and then Brian revisited us right, that's to continue I mean. the discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we just those are actually it. some of my favorite episodes mm-hmm. when we talk about those those indie games like that. Mm-hmm. And then um, forty one, I'm guessing, is either because uh, Andy shared it around, and maybe a bunch of his friends listened to well, it. Well, I think or... probably teachers have searched for it, which is why mm-hmm. I came up with the idea to do that episode in the first place. I mm-hmm. called on my friend Andy uh, because. You know, so many teachers are searching for those kinds mm-hmm. of activities and answers. Yeah. And I feel like we need to revisit in, that, actually. I, because, I agree. Uh, sure. Since then, I've done a lot of research on games and learning. I've worked a little bit with gamification. Right. Um, so I think that would be worth uh, revisiting. I completely agree. And we, we know a lot of people in that. In- well, technically, I, you're I in that industry, not, aren't not, you, Jim? Not technically. I am. Just straight up. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, in that's the, technical. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, I'm like, I do work in the ed tech space. That is actually what I do. At an industry leader in learning games. So what do you know? All right. Um, next question. Uh, this is another sort of stat one that's always kind of fun. According to SoundCloud, uh, which non-U.S. countries have the most listens? So the U.S. is far and away the most mm-hmm. listened to. Uh, we actually have like several thousand America. Um, listens America. in the U.S. America. But which non-U.S. countries uh, have the most listens on SoundCloud? Israel. Israel? What? What? what why? Israelis love us, dude. <laughs> they love us. Germany, because games. Right? Okay. Okay. Uh, Wait, are we, are we listening to top five or just one? Top five. Top five. Okay. Okay. So South Africa. <sighs> I'm going to say that we have... Because they got games. I'm going to say they have zero listeners from South Africa. I'm going to go out on a limb. Because here. Bradley. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to pick the UK as one of mine. And I'm going I'm to agree with you on the UK. All right. In fact, that's my number one. Wait, can we say the UK or can we? do we have to pick like a... England. No, you can, you can say the UK. We can say the, yeah. the UK. Okay, UK. So I got the UK right. on lockdown. Right. Cool. Excellent. <laughs> um, we're, we're in agreement. Okay. Canada has to be in there. Canada's got to be in there too. You hit UK and Canada, but um, I'm going to throw in Mexico. Okay, as our often, brothers to the south, they got to be. We got to get it. Get as our backs. often as we talk about uh, JRPGs, <laughs> Japan, Japan really loves us. No, dude. Japan. Japan they hates love us. us. They, they hate us. Yeah, but they got to log on to listen to hate us. <laughs> Hi, and I'm okay me. with that. Okay. I'm going to say. I'm, okay, I'm going to say. What, what are yours? What are yours, Doc? I'll give mine after. I that. think I, I think I just went like seven or eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pick your five. That's pick, why I was saying. Pick, five. pick right. your five. Uh, Canada, the UK, uh, Japan, Israel. I'm serious about that. <laughs> and Germany. All right. I'm going to say um, the UK. Can't. I'm doing them from top to bottom. Okay. UK, Canada. Um, stick Mexico in at five. Mm-hmm. Let me go back to do my three and four. Three. I'm going to pick. Um, yeah. I guess I guess I'll go Germany as well, mm-hmm. and then for my fourth one, I'm gonna go Jamaica. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, because they're <laughs> look, they're close. They're close to us. Mm-hmm. 
They all speak English there, and they're just going to chill. They're just chilling. They're sitting back, you know, having a brew. <laughs> Listen to the show. Just fits. <laughs> All right. I, I like that mental image, actually. That is, that is amazing. <laughs> that is so wrong. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to count up from five. Okay. And number five is Japan. What? Hey! Oh, come on. Really? Told you they love us there. Japan. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I, 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 I never said anything bad. Well, hey, I've always talked really highly of Japanese games. It's Doc that, that doesn't. <laughs> I got to say, Samurai Gourmet, mm. amazing show. Chris, okay. thank you for cool. turning this on to that. We yeah, watched yeah. every episode. It was, oh, awesome. it was glorious. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Glad you liked it. Um, number four, the Netherlands. Oh, of course, wow, of course, the literal Netherlands. Well, they're, but they're they're so stoned all the time over there. They probably don't even know what they're listening to. They they love us in the Nether. Oh, okay. <laughs> you have to keep in mind, Jim. I'm actually naming people that listen to us. So. I know, I know. <laughs> Although I do wonder sometimes how much of this is just like I, sort of incidental hits on something. No, no. I'm 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 trying to get that Jim back segment <laughs> rolling. I was gonna say just, yeah, there are, there are enough though that I kind of feel like they're not all accidents. So take that as you will. Uh, anyway, uh, number three is Canada. Okay. Yeah, cold. Canada. Figured it had to be on there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Number two is the UK. Oh, oh yeah. Only a number no, two. I thought they'd be number one. Me too. Mm-hmm. And number one, believe it or not, is France. France. Ah, oh, the French. We. Oui. Oh, interesting. Okay. Interesting. And very, very um, unusual. Incidentally, Germany came in at number six. Okay. Oh, so, so they were so in you, there. you guys yeah. weren't too far off. Okay. But. Yeah. Where'd Jamaica fall? I didn't see Jamaica. No, Jamaica. <laughs> oh, Jamaica. Come on, Jamaica. Oh. <laughs> if you actually are listening from Jamaica, we love you. Ja- please Jamaica, keep why can't you be more like Japan? Listen to us. <laughs> All right. Parlay games, man. All right. <laughs> Some more fun stats here. What are our five longest episodes? Well, this one. Well, uh, epi- um, episode zero <laughs> is one of them. Uh, that doesn't count. Okay, once again, we're ca- episode zero <laughs> happened. It did happen. I'm counting things that people can actually find on our podcast. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, okay, so, so basically Cheap. when we changed the format, we went down to kind of shoot for uh, an hour. Right. Um, ish, an hour fifteen, hour twenty. But before that, even when we launched the segments, we were we were running two hours um, easy. So pretty much anything through episode, let's call it like eighty, could have been. Uh, oh no! It was longest. it was before it was before eighty where we cut it down though. It was it was well before eighty that we because really when we started going this was to like sixty yeah when we started going to our segments where it was as opposed to just having an icebreaker we released and a talk, more often too because we went to a weekly or, right. Close to a week. Yeah, we, we did release more often, but we definitely we, we trimmed it down. And part part yeah. of the reasoning behind that was we could record two episodes at a time instead of recording like one two hour episode. We yeah. record two one hour episodes. Mm-hmm. Well, that and we listen to our fans like Blizzard. <laughs> it had at least one of them in the really really early time had to have been whatever longest. I'm going to say episode four. Ben was on four, right? Uh, he he was on five. Time. He was on five, not four. Mm-hmm. Then I'm going to say five. Okay. Um. So, so I'm going to say so five is one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, the Thanksgiving special, yeah, I was where we say all that. came together. I'm mm-hmm. putting that on my list. In fact, that one's probably at num- at the top of the list. That um, around my literal family table. Yeah, yeah. you're around. That was table. one of our only. In fact, that was the only time we ever did real round table episodes. Was yeah, that it was time. around that round table. Um, I'm not sure if we did an actual. Oh no, we did do transistor and axiom. I'm going with the in, year in review mm-hmm. um, episodes for 2015 and 2016. Okay. Well, I'm going to say the Christmas, the first Christmas special we did too. Oh, that's definitely true so, because it was tied in, right? And we did it as a live cast, and then we split it as then, a roll with it, mm-hmm. and also as a full episode. Right. That's totally number one. That's got to be on there. It depends on how Chris counts it. That's mm-hmm. our longest episode. But I think that yeah. that one's up there. Thanksgiving one is super long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That and I think I think number five was like the wild card. That I'm pretty sure that was pretty long. All right, give us give us the and answers. then those two that Doc said are also pretty long. Yeah, the year interviews. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, so counting up from number five. 27, roundtable discussion, Sherlock Holmes, Crimes and Punishments. That clock ended at 1 hour, 48 minutes, 17 seconds. Yeah. Really? Okay. Wow. Number four was 47, uh, performance and game development. Uh, that was 1 hour, 49 minutes, 27 seconds. That was the one, gym that we recorded at your apartment, and we got into that little bit of a debate about the um, sag after a strike. Um, right, right. Okay. And so we had a, a long talk about that, and then we're kind of we we freewheeled a little bit about MGS five, so that took a while. Right. And this was back before we started to shoot for that one hour to and one before hour. Before bonus compatible existed. Yes. <laughs> so that one ran a little bit long. Um, number thirty nine, our roundtable discussion on Axiom Verge. That doesn't surprise me a bit. Um, that was one hour fifty three minutes and forty four seconds. Episode 54, the holiday special 2015 cross okay. crossroad. I got one. Yeah. Who we got that one? That one was two hours, <laughs> five minutes, 36 seconds. 
Okay. Yep. Um, and that was actually trimmed down significantly from the live cast, which I think might have gone two and a half hours, three hours. At least. Yeah, the live yeah. cast was really Appleton long. Mall. Mm-hmm. So, so number one's got to be the Thanksgiving special. We had like 40 people in Cram yeah. and Doc's house. Uh, number one is number 17, Thanksgiving special 2014. Okay. So I got those two because those were my yeah. one and two. Um, that yeah. one we're, clocked in at two hours, eight minutes, 43 seconds. Okay, cool. So we both got two. Yeah. Now, the opposite end of the spectrum, what were our five shortest episodes? Oh, goodness. Uh, they were all bonus compatibles. <laughs> that doesn't count. That doesn't oh, Killing me here. Th- those are player rules. codex. With your rules. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I really have no idea. Yeah, I I can't possibly. I don't think I can. Pos- I mean, I know we had some where they were where we got a little bit under an hour. We've done that a few times, and then we've we've had some that are like, you know, an hour and a minute or something. Yeah. And I remember feeling afterward like, oh wow, that was that went pretty quick. But uh, I can't. I for can't some reason, I want to say um, Peter Wanaka, the one that he was on, was was kind of a short one because it was so very to the point. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was, that was a great. Episode, yeah. Um, was that one of the ones? I want to say one of one of the ones with Bradley actually ended up pretty short too. That wouldn't surprise me. Like, like, like one of the ones that I don't remember which one. I know he's on three of them, but one of the ones he was on, I'm I'm pretty well, sure I remember. Vi- like he couldn't one. stay, he couldn't stay that long. Yeah, it might have been that one where he couldn't stay that long, and so we did a little bit before he came or something like yeah, that. So let's call it good, bad, and the ugly. Uh, my, my sure. good, bad, and ugly. There we go. A pretty short one. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think that I think that um, our education one was actually kind of short. Um, all said and done. So the one with uh, Andy Howell on it. At number five, um, episode eighty-four, Thanksgiving special, twenty sixteen. Oh, <laughs> that's ironic. Uh, mm-hmm. That was when uh, that was after we switched to our um, feast of side segments format for Thanksgiving. Right. That's right. Um, so that one was uh, fifty-nine minutes and fifteen seconds. Subtitle: Don't you guys dare come over to my house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so actually, all of the shortest episodes logged in under an hour. Huh. So interesting. Um, but barely, it seems. Yeah. At number four, um, we have episode 12, Theater, Mythology, and Ritual in the Modern Age, uh, with oh, Thomas Riccio. Yeah, yeah. That one was 56 minutes, 39 seconds. And that one is probably a little bit shorter because it was just a one-on-one interview that I was doing with them. So right. uh, we, again, got pretty much to the point and had a good discussion, but we didn't have a lot of meandering as a result. Mm-hmm. Um, that was before we had our, our backwash segment, mm-hmm. right? Where we come in and after an episode, we, oh, back we comment on... Yeah, I yeah. know. I said it wrong on purpose. <laughs> I said it wrong on purpose because you never want to use my names. <laughs> um, at number three... <laughs> Episode 66, Developing, Ending the Cycle, the board game, mm-hmm. feat, uh, Peter Wanaka. That was Peter Wanaka. I called it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that one was 55 minutes and 26 seconds. In number two, we have number 55, Year in Review 2015. Hmm. Um, actually, a lot of our year in reviews were a little bit shorter. Really? Um, oh, wow. so I thought they were longer ones. Uh, the 2016 one was a little bit longer because we also talked about the show. Um, but there was one year in review. Actually, this one in particular was just you two talking about it. I was gone for that one. Oh. Um, so that one ended up being shorter. So that was 54 minutes and 20 seconds. We just knocked off early. And we're like, Chris is not here. <laughs> I'll leave five minutes early. <laughs> Let's go get a burger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and our shortest episode was episode six, Accessibility in Tabletop Role-Playing Games, at 48 minutes and three seconds. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was the one where uh, Richard had to take off early. Um, so we wrapped a little bit early. Oh, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. And that was also one of the ones we recorded the film more. So. I was not involved. Okay, a couple last questions for you. And again, this is going back to the uh, third rule set, which is uh, you just try to guess the answer first. If you're correct, you get three points. The other person can steal for one point. Which episodes were out of order due to time travel? Oh, uh, ooh. Uh, 42 and 24. Uh, that goes to Jim. It was 28 and 42. Yeah. So uh, we went 27, 42, because you guys came back from the future. Um, and then back to 29. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when we got up to 41, then we had 28, and then we had 43. That's right. That's right. Well done, Jim. Ah. And finally, which was our most productive quarter in terms of releases? Most number of releases in that three-month period. So oh. <laughs> by this definition, quarter one is February or January, February, March. Quarter two is... Are we naming the year two? Yes. Last quarter of 2016. So to give you guys a little bit of a hint, I'm not counting uh, quarter two of 2017 because that's not over yet. Oh, well, um, we started in quarter three of 2014. Technically, we recorded a couple episodes um, in June, uh, but according to our RSS feed, um, we didn't actually start publishing the podcasts until early July. Lies. Um, so everything is counted from July 2014 onward. I'm sticking to my answer. Final quarter of last year. So you would say uh, 2016. Q, Q4 2016? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm- Gonna say 
Uh, that's a pretty good guess, actually. Because I think we did kind of... Well, hold on now. What are we... That's before we get into tricks. Okay, mm. a couple questions for you. One, episode zero. Are we counting it here? No. Yeah, <laughs> I'm kidding. But, but, ser- but serious question. Um, are we going to count when they were published, published. or when they were recorded? Published. Okay. Because those are two different things. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, just to give you a little bit of a hint, that mm-hmm. includes um, the Christmas special where we crossed over with Roll With It. Mm-hmm. That was recorded live in 2015, but wasn't released until 2016. Right. Okay. Makes sense. So you, you're thinking it was this year, Christmas. Yeah, yeah I was, I was going to say so. Until he said that. Mm-hmm. Now I'm thinking it might be first quarter of 2016. Yeah, I'm actually am going to go first quarter of 2016. Okay. Um, the correct answer is actually quarter three of 2015. Uh, we had 13 really? episodes, so we actually met the one-to-one weekly release ratio. Wow. Quarter three of 2015. Okay. And then, so see, that was when, that was actually when I came, my first few months back from Houston. That makes sense. Because I, I came back to work, this is what I was saying, I did have some time while I wasn't here. Mm-hmm. And so I started my job at iStation in April of 2015, and then I was settled, and then mm-hmm. I... Then That's back I, when Chris was still using the whip. That makes sense, though. So that was um, episodes 33, uh, beginning with our roundtable discussion on Transistor, through um, 45, the Super Mario 30th anniversary. So I concede the win to the trivia oh. game to, uh, to Jim. I don't have to concede the win. He, he won fair and square. <laughs> but uh, well I, did, done. I did better than I expected. I didn't expect to get anything right. So yeah, well, Congratulations. There's some, some tricky, uh, tricky questions. There are a lot of tricky questions. In yeah, no kidding. Lots of trick questions. <laughs> But now we're going to go ahead and move on to something that's a little bit more uh, personal, a little bit more, uh, or a little less about the show, a little bit more about us. Wow. Um, so, Doc, do you want to explain to us exactly how this game works? All right. Well, this is inspired by the Newlywed Game, uh, which is an old show from, what, like the 70s? Um, it was on the Game Show Network for a while. I used to watch it more than I care to admit um, mm. back in, like, 2000s, early 2000s. But um, basically what happens is uh, we're going to ask a question. And then the person the question is being asked of, not to, but of, is going to give their answer secretly. And then the others of us will have to figure out what their answer is going to be. And then they reveal their answer. So, for example, if we were to say, uh, what is Jim's favorite color? Um, He writes down that it is, in fact... Uh, a certain thing, Mm -hmm. and then I say, I think it's green, and Chris says, I think it's blue, and he reveals, no, it's chartreuse. I I, I hold up plaid, and you (laughs) go, damn it, Jim. (laughs) That's not a color. (laughs) And and points are rewarded based upon um, correct answers. And Jim, of course, gets the uh, the point if if neither one of us gets it. Mm Um, and so for the 100th episode, we had a few of our previous guests uh, kind of write in to uh, send their greetings, and they also exciting. contributed a few questions to this game. Uh, so the first one we have actually comes from Nick. So the first question will go to Doc, and then we'll move on to Jim, and we'll just keep rotating from there. Hey guys, my name is Nick Kruger. I write all the music for the Backward Compatible podcast. If you like any of the section stingers or if you like the theme song, that's my fault. I've been on a few episodes, but mostly I stick to the music side of things. There were five channels on the uh, NES sound chip, um, two of which were the same. They're called pulse channels. And then there was a triangle channel and a noise channel. And then there was also a, um, a sample channel. Backward compatible. So basically, in, in simple terms, the pulse channels were, or the pulse channels and the triangle channels were, you know, they would play notes and those are the actual sounds that you would hear. And then the noise channel was uh, sort of a more percussive, just white noise, like shh, that sort of thing. And that would be used mostly used for percussion um, in, in nest music. Um, and then the sample channel, you could bring in, like, drum sound effects and stuff like that, just if you want to have some extra stuff, but it would actually require a lot of storage space, so most of the time those weren't used. Yeah, that's also where you'd put in um, voiceover, if you had any, Yeah. Um, which was pretty rare back in those days, but um, yeah. the sample channel, you could actually just record a voice and have that pop up. Backward compatible. All right, question number one. What is the worst game that you really love? So, like... A game that objectively everybody thinks is bad, but you, for whatever twisted reason, think it's actually really fun, or maybe you liked it as a kid and you haven't grown out of it yet. I don't know, something like that. What is the worst game that you really like? So there, so there's your question, Doc. So you write down your stuff. 
Okay, so it's a game. It has to be a game that is objectively terrible. Mm-hmm. The most people think it's terrible, at least. No, no, there's a difference. Mm. See, most people like Minecraft. It's objectively terrible. So that's... <laughs> that's subjective, I think. Wow. <laughs> but but we can we can say so a game that is generally seen as send poor. your email to woke gem <laughs> hashtag woke gem hashtag woke woke gem. <laughs> um, but the doc really likes. Turns out I don't like games at all. <laughs> <laughs> it was all a facade. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say, I don't even know if Doc will remember this, but I'm gonna say that the Prince of Persia reboot game that came out in like 2006, I guess mm, it was. That's a good one. Yeah. Not Sands of Time, but like just Prince of Persia. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Doc knows the game I'm talking about. Prince because, of Persia 2008 is what you're talking about. Yeah, 2008. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know the year of it, but you know the one I mean. The yeah. one that was like the reboot, Pop 28, which man. was generally considered not a good game. But I do recall Doc talking about, and not that it was considered a terrible game, but it was generally considered a disappointment. I remember Doc talking about how he really enjoyed it. It's because they didn't play the DLC. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pick that game. The true ending. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I'm going to guess Odyssey Journey to the West, uh, just because it is not a bad game. I don't think a lot of people said it was a bad game, but it was. it's definitely a cult classic. See, I intentionally I didn't pick that one because I don't think... I don't think it's typically considered a bad game. I think it's more of an underplayed game. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. why I didn't pick it. Yeah, or, yeah. or an underrecognized game. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure if it. If but I don't know. Like we're we're, we're all we're both really kind of yeah. cool classic. We're not really but, sure. Yeah. yeah. Neither of us know this. Okay. So here's the irony. Uh, are you are you serious? Minecraft. I put Minecraft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Minecraft. And I would have said I would have yeah, said you, it. You mentioned that as the of example. Of course. That, yeah. Oh, uh, that's but, awesome. No, I, the it, reason why I didn't pick it was because I would have assumed that it's a popular game; it wouldn't count. No, I had my big awakening last yeah. year where I I had a server and everything, and I invited a bunch of people to it. And nobody came. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was like a sad birthday party where nobody <laughs> came because I had not realized that in the three or four years since I had played it actively, it had changed. That there's a stigma. It was a stigma game now. I had no idea and now i've kind of researched that and i realized yeah it's considered a kids game Mm -hmm. um people genuinely hate minecraft now and they consider minecrafters to be this sort of so venomous terrible kind of icky diseased population Mm. and what if you've ever seen footage from minecon you might know why well (laughs) Well, I, i think i think if you what this what this teaches us all is an important lesson is that even though you might think my opinion is subjective at the time give it enough give it a few years people will come around (laughs) <laughs> they realized I was right all along. Hashtag woke Jim. Hashtag woke Jim. <laughs> <laughs> the world is just not woke like Jim is. Yet. That's right. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, so so we point. failed. Yeah, I, I get a point then because yep, I, I did, I'm not going to say I tricked you guys mm-hmm. but, because you guys suck. All right. So the next second question is going to go to Jim. All righty. Question two. What is the biggest change in opinion you've ever had on a video game? One that you loved and then started to hate or hate and then you started to love? Uh, you thought it would be cool when you saw the trailers, but when you played it, you hated it, something like that. What's the biggest 180 you've taken in terms of your thoughts on a particular video game? It's a, that's a really tough question. Mm-hmm. I love the question, though. That's really that's a really great question. <laughs> Here's the clip um, oh, thank you. And I'm just going to do the first one that comes to mind. Who knows if this is, like, the actual, because I'd probably have to think mm-hmm. long and hard for all, through our all history. But this is definitely an answer. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to throw out a guess and say Mass Effect. I'm gonna. I, I think that you might have seen the trailers and been intrigued, and then been very disappointed that Bioware sort of took what you consider to be a downward, downward course. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I think it's going to be something kind of classic. Let's go with um, Metroid Other M. Hmm. Uh, unfortunately, Metroid Other M I knew was going to be terrible right from the start. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so no, my no, I'm saying you grew to love it. No, as I we it. all know. <laughs> um, actually, my answer was Bioshock Infinite. Oh, oh excellent choice. Um, Good one. Yeah. The I, I I am a fan of Bioshock, the original game, and I really enjoyed Bioshock Two. Actually, mm-hmm. uh, kind of an underrated game, I think. Um, Infinite, especially looked, the DLC. Especially the DLC, exactly. I thought the trailer for Bioshock Infinite was really interesting. Um, I liked the way the world looked. I was really intrigued with my first few moments, like early, the early parts of the game. But uh, frankly, I felt it was a huge step backward for the series. I, ho- I thought the story was a load of crap. I thought the reveal at the end was um, horrible. I mean, I honestly thought it actually, uh, it actually hurt my opinion of the series in general. That was how disappointed <laughs> I was. And I, I also felt that the gameplay was actually um, just too repetitive. Mm. Like compared to the sort of things you could do in the original Bioshock, I didn't feel like it had that same sort of... Um, emergent gameplay that mm-hmm. the original had. So it wasn't a bad game per se. If it had come out under a different name, it just would have been a game. But because I was expecting more from it, mm-hmm. there was a pretty big um, negative reaction for it. Gotcha. Good answer. So, 
Right. Mass Effect is not a bad guess, though, because that certainly is on there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the first Mass Effect, I probably had a... Um, I thought it was okay. I think it was more for me Mass Effect 2. That I know I know people like that game, but for me, mm-hmm. it was just way too... We don't care about RPGs anymore. This is just a, cin- a cinematic experience. Mm-hmm. No, I'm going to go to the freaking theater if I want a cinematic experience. <laughs> Damn it, Bioware. <laughs> All right, sorry. I'm All not right. going to rant about Bioware right now. Uh, so I believe we also had a write-in from Bradley. Okay. Uh, Bradley McAvoy-James, who's joined us for a few episodes. People ask me, naturally, to give examples of this triangle. So me being from Britain, I used a lot of uh, British games that I knew had been made. So, like, you know... Um you know, I was going the Fable series. That was the one I used a lot, mm-hmm. like because uh, everyone knew the Fable at the time. It was one of the, the games that was recently come out. Um, so I was using the Fable series, and I noticed, like offhand, that the triangle was not consistent with how I looked at American games, like made from American developers. And it started started to reveal to me that you know there might actually be a further split in Western game design. Um, which are, are, you know, sorry. Bradley, are you are you implying that British culture and American culture has differences? I, I might be. Oh, <laughs> I, know it's, I know it's shocking. I don't, I don't see that at all. <laughs> I mean, Grand Theft Auto was made in America, right? Rockstar's an American studio. I'm pretty sure Rockstar's an American studio. They're as American as they come. Bradley writes, "Hey guys, grats on a hundred shows. It's been a pleasure to have been a part of a few of them, and I look forward to doing a few more as your British buddy." Here's to 100 more. All right, so his question is, what, uh, or who, rather, is your favorite video game character? Oh, come on. Hmm. That's a good question. Okay, now this is, this is where we see, is Chris going to be honest? Or is he going to try to trick us? Right. I'm not, I'm not going to try to trick <laughs> okay. you. I'm, just, I'm trying to. How are you, how are you thinking about this? I, I, don't I know the answer to this. <laughs> I know, right? Come on, Chris. Oh, I know what you're thinking. Okay. Not, you know what I'm thinking because it's the answer. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> don't, don't, don't BS us, Chris. Come on now. <laughs> you came out in episode two. <laughs> Episode two as a Sonic fanboy. This guy's a fanboy doesn't mean he's my favorite character. Oh, come on. <laughs> because you don't think he's a character. He's like, he's a way of life. <laughs> Gotta go fast. <laughs> um, I, I, will, I will give this to you guys. My answer will not be Sonic. Oh, come on. <laughs> so what he's saying is since... <sighs> this is going to be number two because we know it's we Sonic. Guessed, right. We know it's before Sonic. Before he had a chance to write it down, okay. he's really going to give us his number two. I'll accept that. <laughs> I'll accept that. But we all know Sonic is number one on the record. Yeah, I think I think we just need to go with gut answers mm-hmm. because we like a lot of these. I have a feeling we're gonna have to like think long and hard about them if we're giving a real answer. Oh no, no, give your gut answer, man. Go for it. Well, but now, he, but he can't because he just told us he wouldn't. Whatever. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to reference everyone as John. <laughs> I think his answer is solid. Literally, mm-hmm. Snake. So you're going to go Solid Snake? Yeah, Metal Gears. Yeah, I'm also going to go Snake, but I'm actually going to go... Um, Are you going Liquid Snake? I'm going to go uh, the bo- the Big Boss. Oh, Boss. Mm. Nice. The big Boss. Okay. Not the Boss, the Big Boss. Uh, actually, that's... that's From MGS3. That, that's a good one, but I wasn't thinking of that. And also um, five. That's not Mario, didn't you? No, I actually went with uh, Yu Nawakami. Uh, this is a little bit of a... It's, it's an interesting one. Is this like one. Sonic's real name? No. <laughs> Secret <laughs> identity. Don't say um, It is the default name Got of the um, protagonist in Persona 4. Um, oh, okay. So you, you pour yourself into that character quite a bit, but there's also a lot about him that's kind of predefined. So had we said the Persona 4 protagonist, yeah. you would have given it to Yeah, us. I would have given you Does that. Does that translate yes. as... He, he was uh, Chris no Kruger when I played. So. Okay. Oh, well, there you go. Kruger-san. <laughs> that's, that's like in Zelda, whenever you didn't enter. I just, it, I just lost at least one Japanese name right there. It was nope. Nanami. <laughs> Nanami. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Nanami. Yeah, Nanami. Snake was a good guess, though, actually, if I had thought of Metal Gear. Had you picked, <laughs> would you have picked Solid Snake or the Big Boss? Oh, that's a good question. Um, Even though the Big Boss, for me, has done, he's obviously done some pretty bad things. He's a tragic character, for he's sure. He's a tragic. I think he's yeah. the most interesting. Mm-hmm. Although... See, technically, the boss that you play, Punish Snake, in the fifth... In mm-hmm. no, it's, it's, it's a different character. Is, a, like, kind of. It's like, he was the same character as, as, the, as the snake we saw in MGS3, mm-hmm. but it's not the same snake that was later later the big boss right. as the villain. Mm-hmm. Well, But he, he was, was the big boss in, in Metal Gear 2. He was the bodyguard of the snake that was in Metal Gear Solid 3. 
because he was he was like one of his like right hand men. Yes, but he and got then, but he had he also got all of the memories of yeah. Snake. Yeah, from all of his previous time. That's a good point. Remember, good so point. he was kind so, of as far as like, he knew from that he point, was, he yeah. was kind of Snake. That, that yeah. was the whole like duality mm-hmm. of his character. Is that he yeah. was kind of his own person, but he was also Snake mm-hmm. up to a point, which is why. He was still recognized mm-hmm. as being. Snake. It's a little bit like we're getting uh, way off, off. It's like a little bit like Liquid Ocelot, how like he went through psychotherapy mm-hmm. and stuff like that to make himself believe he exactly, was liquid. exactly, yeah, yeah. So he kind of is at that point, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's debatable. Yeah, Bradley. Second question. All right, is it to me now? Uh, y- yeah, this would okay. be Doc. Oh, no, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and read this. For okay, you. go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so as you guys know, uh, Bradley is a big trading card game fan, um, and there was one in particular he's been playing for over twenty years. So his question is, what is your favorite trading card game? Was that was that like Magic that he was up for over twenty years, or was it Pokemon? I think, I think it was. I think it was Yu-Gi-Oh. It might have been Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh. It was Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Okay. What What's my favorite? Mm-hmm. Um, trading card game. Trading card game. Now, are we talking analog or digital? I think it could be either. Yeah, I don't. I don't yeah. think it matters. All right. Then we well, get to write it down. Yeah, I know. <laughs> don't, um, don't just say it. Thing is, if I gave my real answer, I don't think either one of you guys would get it. Well, you give the answer that you feel is, in your gut is this is your favorite trading card game. Okay. We'll so see how well we know you. You pick right. it if you feel so I'm gonna you dis- do what you want to do. I'm going to dismiss the thing I was originally thinking, mm-hmm. uh, which is Pirates of the Spanish Main, mm. which was a constructible card game, oh, okay. which was collectible and technically a minis game. Because mm-hmm. that, 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 that game ruled. That we would have never gotten that. You never would have gotten it. <laughs> so instead, I'm going to put down something that I think... I think um, hopefully, you you know. So for me, it's got to be: is Doc going to get? Is Doc going to give an answer that that is a game that he's playing currently, or is he going to pick a game that he played in the past, which he's long since outgrown? And because I know that Doc is a mature individual who would only pick a game that he still believes in and still plays to this day, mm-hmm. I'm going to say Gwent. I'm going to shame you if you didn't write it down. Basically, <laughs> that's my goal. <laughs> okay, Chris. Um, I'm going to say Hearthstone. Even though you don't currently play it, I think that might be the one that you got into. My answer's Hearthstone. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. Doc, you don't even <laughs> it play was, it anymore. I know. And, you and immature I, soul. And I actually <laughs> am actively playing Gwen. I know. That's why I picked it. That's why I picked um, it. <laughs> but I, I also recognize that I don't think I'll ever get into Gwent as much as I got into Hearthstone at, at, at the max. And there's a special sort of place in my heart for Hearthstone mm. because um, I started playing it uh, during the time that my wife was pregnant. And then stopped playing it whenever my son got old enough to go, what's that? I'm going to push the buttons. <laughs> and so when he's a little older, I'd probably pick it back up again. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not, it's not toddler friendly in that regard. Mm. Um, so that's kind of the reason why I'm not playing it uh, You outgrew it. Actively. You outgrew it and you went to Gwent, a mature game. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying all this because it's one I picked. It's true. The true, <laughs> the true end game of Witcher 3, Gwent. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I'm, I'm actually very interested in picking up one of the analog copies of Gwent. You can do yeah, it for about it looked, 120 bucks. It looks pretty cool, it's actually. It's pretty amazing. It's a complete set um, from the game, mm-hmm. from, from the, you know, the original uh, video game. Mm-hmm. But now that the other is out and they've changed some of the rules, and I'm, I'm really interested in seeing where they're going with that. I think there's so much potential for Gwent. Yeah, it's just going to be really hard to get cards because back, you know, in in Witcher Three, you could just you'd find cards on you know you could find cards on bodies. You could bet people inside inside bars or something. You can go like fight a bear and he sends you on a quest to go kill some hag or something. Mm-hmm. It's going to be pretty tough to do. You know, we don't really have that many hags. They don't really <laughs> encourage murder or just on the streets. It's true. And, it's true. Hag isn't exactly a PC term these days. Well, she was. I mean. She was kind of a monster that ate children, so I don't know. I think we can get, I think we can get away with calling her a hag at that point. You know, I think even just about every woman is going to be like, yeah, okay. I mean, if she's if she's literally eating children, I think we might go ahead and call that a hag. I'm still not digging through bear poo for a Gwent card. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, too bad then. You're just not dedicated. No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> we want to mention Phil's. Gungans actually have very short lifespans, uh-huh. and so he's dead no matter what. Come episode four, uh, but uh, I, I don't have a source for this, so maybe it's a, so it's apocryphal. Uh, but um, you mean legendary? It, yes, we'll go with that. That Abrams has joked about putting uh, Jar Jar Binks' skeleton mm-hmm. dead in the sand dunes of that opening shot with the star destroyer just off in the corner, so far away and small, the average viewer wouldn't be able to see it. But it would still be in the scene, technically. I, I'd go for R-rated Star Wars. Wars. That's Jar-Rated. how much I would have. Yeah, I would just remember Jar Jar. It would be an R-rated movie. They'd have to. Like the 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 
the Academy would look at it and just like, we, we can't. We, we cannot should, give this a PG yes. rating. We, we should probably can't. go back to the We should probably game. get back on topic, <laughs> but I will, I, will leave, I, will, I will leave the Jar Jar topic at this. He stuck his face in a... Uh, a racing engine. He should have died in the first movie. Yeah. Time travel. Okay, back to time travel. Sorry. All right, so Phil's question is, uh, can I host episode 132? <laughs> so, do you think Jim is going to say yes? Oh, well, come on. That's not that's or, not my real question. Or not? <laughs> well, well or, that's not a real question. Well, we'll get we'll, we'll also a hypothetical one. Thank you for writing in, Phil. Yeah. I uh, appreciate it. I'm pretty sure it was a joke question. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Pretty sure. yeah his, his wife is in town for the weekend. Gotcha, and so, yeah. uh, sure, sure, Phil. Yeah. We can have you on. We, he's 132. Excuse- now, the question is, is he hosting solo or is he going to be co-hosting 132? Oh, that's a really good question. I would assume that, that he's co-hosting. I would say co-host, yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. We'll have you on for 132, Phil. <laughs> Excellent. There you go. Cool. So look look forward uh, 32 episodes from now. For <laughs> that that means we have to co-host. do at least 32 more episodes. So That's right. It's almost like time travel. <laughs> Should we give Jim his real question Yes, now? let's give Jim a okay. real question. Okay. Um, Jim, your real question. Of the four Bartle game types. Oh, God. Which are socializer. Explorer, Achiever, and Killer. Which would you identify with the most? If you had to pick one. Socializer, Explorer, Achiever, or Killer. Which are you? And of course, for those who are not familiar with the Bartle test of gamer psychology, uh, search for it, Mm -hmm. and you can actually take the test online and discover what gamer type you are. Now, it was originally designed for MMORPGs, Mm -hmm. but... But we've, in the past, talked about it, sort of extended that idea. Mm-hmm. And I think it applies. I yeah. think it's a, a it, great little uh, system. Yeah, it's it's not a perfect system, no. um, but I definitely think that it has usefulness as a basis, like a starting point mm-hmm. for discussion. So. And, and even as a design principle, mm-hmm. um, the idea of, of designing for that. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. I'm going to guess Achiever. I was also going to uh, guess Achiever. Um, but... I'm going to risk it. Mm. I'm going to take the risk here, and I'm okay. going to go with Killer. I think Jim's killing it. And these are your guesses from knowing me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Do I really know you? <laughs> well, Depends on my mood at the time. I do not believe that the Bartle type can success can accurately <laughs> apply, at least not to me. He opted out. I specifically <laughs> said that answer on the podcast before, though. Yeah, you did. So that was a like throwback. You, you truly, was a callback. You truly did, yeah. So. So that means we're both wrong. We'll never know. And Jim, Jim, <laughs> no, no, no. Point. It's not that. Th- th- that is actually my answer. It depends yeah, yeah. on the day. No, like saying, I've, yeah. I've been all of those in different games mm. at different times. Gotcha, gotcha. So I can't really. I don't think I accurately fit any. If you can, in good conscience, take that point, Jim. We will give it to you. I, I already took it. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I, know, I, know, I it now. I was just trying to guilt you a little bit there. All right. I wasn't trying to, to trick you. I actually have said that exact thing before it's on the true. podcast. Yeah, so if you had just point. written that down. That's... That is a good point. But the way I asked the question, I was like, if you had to nail it down. But you know me. I'm I wanted, not well, I wanted you to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. All right. It's okay. All right. Here's your question, Chris. If you had to pick a favorite setting, a favorite setting, you know, now, Keep in mind here. This is this is kind of coming from the uh, the discussion we've had in the past of why aren't game genres settings? Mm. You know what I'm saying here. Mm-hmm. Game genres are mechanics. Um, mechanics. Mm-hmm. Well, so we don't care about that. But we're that's actually talking about games are, that's what games are about. Right. Well, kind of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you had to pick a setting as your favorite game setting, what would it be? It's a bit like the character question. So are we talking like sort of specific settings, like from like a particular game or just more like the... I think it's a general the mo- setting. Yeah, be more, be more general. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't general. want to give any examples because I don't okay. want it to be your Like, for example, if, if most, of the, most of the Legend of Zelda games would mm-hmm. be considered like a, a general fantasy. Fantasy, mm-hmm. right. There you go. Right. Mm-hmm. So like, you, like a traditional fantasy. Not all mm-hmm. of them, but... As opposed but, to Final Fantasy, which is not a setting. Mm-hmm. Right. It's, yeah. I know what Doc's answer would be, mm-hmm. but he didn't get the question. Doc would Doc would say a beautiful apocalypse. Like Absolutely, <laughs> but but that's okay. So what would Chris and what, what do you think the setting is of Sonic though? Like that's the real question. <laughs> well, I think that, that might be an apocalypse. I mean, the, a robocalypse. A ro- robo apocalypse. Uh, no, no, no robocalypse. Ro- robocalypse. Mm. The robocalypse. Mm-hmm. Fantasy robocalypse. <laughs> I'm not actually going to guess that, by the way. Okay. Um, well, you know, there was the Sonic game that was actually set in um, King Arthur's Day, whatever that one was. 
Oh yeah, Sonic and the Black Knight. If yeah. Will was here, he would. Know. Oh yeah, the Black Knight. See, <laughs> yeah. so so that could be his answer. <laughs> I don't think it is though. Uh, my answer is I'm going to say because you've been on a Persona kick. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to say like like the modern Japan high school that kind of thing. Like just oh, Jap- modern Japan. Good answer. That's... Very good answer. Okay. Um, so I'm going to say near future, near as future. in like um, Metal Gear. Mm-hmm. All right. Some Metal Gear, actually. Well, that's true. That's a good point. Based on what I wrote down, those are both pretty close. Based on what I wrote down, I think Jim's a little bit closer. Um, so I'm probably going to give it to Jim. I said fantastic contemporary. Um, <laughs> nice. That's to say it's like modern day or near future, but with like a fantastic twist. That's I said Final of, Fantasy was not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, it's, it's, it's I just something, specifically point out yeah. Persona as my example. Yeah, and that's, that's that my example. Count. It's yeah. not just Persona, but Persona count. definitely falls into that Based category. Based on Persona, yeah, i yeah. got to give that um, to you. Technically, Persona does take place a few years in the future. Yeah. Like, it's modern, mm-hmm. but well, it's not I like... I mean, Persona it, 5 is like, basically example, Pokemon. So Persona 5 is 20 XDX, so it could be... You know, two no, years from now, it could be twenty years from now. But I've been I've been on a lot of the forums. People say it's typically five years mm-hmm. in the future is yeah. what it's usually considered. I think four actually had a specific date, and it, it may was have. like five years ahead of the day it was released, or something like that. Yeah. Maybe that's why people are like constantly like, "Oh, it's always five years" mm-hmm. or something. All right, so this anyway. is this is a shill question, but it's my the second one there. Okay, um, is the question for me? Okay. All right, Doc. So your next question: point. Would you rather give up board games or give up video games? Ooh, who wrote this question? I think you did. Oh, that's right. <laughs> um, interesting. Okay, well. Oh, do we? Do you need a? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, no, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna write my answer down here. Oh, so this then, is kind of a. This one's interesting because it's more binary. It's less open ended. It, it, that's right. It's just one or the other. Although you could take the gym approach and just say I choose to give up neither. No, no, that, <laughs> see, that would be cheap. That's that would totally, be cheap. That's totally cheap. <laughs> um, yeah, and and this is this is basically with a, a buy try trash mentality mm-hmm. of never ever playing another mm. of that type of game ever again for the rest of my life, I can only play the other kind. That's actually really hard and brings me to tears. Mm-hmm. So wait, what are the choices? Uh, give up board games or give up video games? So what is so is board game encapsulating um, traditional role-playing like pen and paper? I would probably count... And also card games? Any, anything tabletop would probably be board games, yeah. What about LARPing? Um, Can, could he get out there and LARP? <laughs> it wouldn't be a video game, so. Yeah, but it wouldn't be a board game. No board. It's true. It's I'll no tell video. You what, let's just exclude LARP because if LARP's the answer, I will give up LARP. <laughs> <laughs> right. I just, I just want to know, if, regardless of what you pick, mm-hmm. you can still LARP is what I'm getting at here. So, really, so you're good. You're I, think, I think the question really is digital or analog. Mm-hmm. If digital I had to analog. give up digital or analog, which would it be? I think you would give up video games. I think you would give up digital. Do you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to pick the same. Okay. You're correct. I would give up video games okay. before I gave up analog games. Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Partly that's because I have a room in my house that's dedicated to board games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's also the social element. Um, right. Yeah. If you right. include tabletop RPGs, then it's open and you can play literally anything yeah. anytime. Well, and I, and I and hadn't it, even thought about that when right. I wrote the question. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and when you take LARPing into account, you're a big LARPer. Then. I am not. <laughs> Don't start these <laughs> um, Oh, did we count Jim's uh, point for... Yes, I already put that he, one. He totally did. And so I guess we both okay. get one for... Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so you each get half of a point because you were both right. I'm making these rules up as I go along. <laughs> okay. It's a half. <laughs> yeah. But that's okay because you're still beating me by a significant number of points. All right. So this is, this is an homage question. Okay. okay. It's, a, it's a genuine try-by-trash oh. question. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's of a different type. It's of, of, of a transmedia type. And so, Jim, if you were going to try, buy, or trash Hulu, Prime, or Netflix, which would it be? <laughs> I know. Give me, give me the... I, all, need, the I, need, the, I need the buy, try, and trash. The though. buy, the try, and okay. the trash. Right. That's fair. Okay. You got your answers? Yes. I promise I didn't put trash all three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, n- n- again, I am currently subscribed to all three, so I don't hate any of these services. I think I'm going to say you would buy Prime, you would try Netflix and trash Hulu. The reason I say that is because I think my guess would be you like the Netflix content better, but you like the ability to buy anything through Amazon. So Okay, so I'm going to go with – I'm also going to go with trash Hulu, and I'm going to go with buy Netflix – uh, because it's the the one time low subscription fee, and their originals I think are slightly superior to Prime's, which you will try. Okay, um, Chris got it right. Ah. So the reason I went with Amazon as my buy was um, I like I like both Amazon and Netflix, mm-hmm. but lately um, I think 
Amazon has some shows on there for, for free, including a lot of movies mm-hmm. that I like. But also, um, I do like the ability to, to purchase it, very easy purchase options or yeah, rent or rental true. options, mm-hmm. which I think is really awesome. Plus, as part of the Prime service, you get all of your, you know, when you buy something online, you get the free Prime shipping, yeah, which is kind of just part of the deal. Mm-hmm. And also, because I've been really waiting on that new, the new The Tick series. Mm-hmm. I saw the first episode. I loved it. Yep. But uh, Chris gets the point. Yeah. All right, Chris. Mm. What is your all-time favorite board game? Hmm. And so we're ruling out, in this case, tabletop RPGs, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think this has to be. And also, are we ruling out card games? Like, it has to be a board game? Board game. Um, like, not a collectible card I game? Would say, I would say card games and board games would, would go really? together. Yeah. A well, CCG is the same as a board game? Well, no, it's not the same, but Magic does have 80% of the market share in the board game market. So. Indeed. I'll, I'll stick card to board games, games though. Market. So I'm, I'm not going to say TCGs, but it, I will count things like, say, Race to the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, if you use cards, it's fine, but you also have to have a board. Mm. Sonic the Hedgehog, the board game. Board game. <laughs> Gotta go fast. Fast. Um, I feel like if there was a Sonic the Hedgehog board game, you would play it with a spinner. <laughs> and not dice. That does make sense. Yeah. Because yeah. it's got, you gotta just flick Spin it really to fast. see how fast he's gonna go. <laughs> fast, fast, faster, fastest. Right. That was a tricky one for me. But I went with my gut. Excellent. So I think it's something um, that falls into the family category, something old, like, say, this is not my answer, but like Risk or um, Scrabble or something along those lines. Mm. Oh, my actual answer is Risk. I is it? Is yeah. it Risk? Okay. So I'm going to go with um, Sorry. <laughs> I did used to like Sorry. The answer is actually Twilight Struggle. Oh, very nice. Okay. Good choice. Okay. Um, that, and, and also way more adult than <laughs> yeah. I was giving you credit for. <laughs> I, ironically, though, I actually haven't played a ton of it. Um, mm-hmm. It's more that like I've read through the rules. And I have played enough of it to kind of get a feel for it. Yeah. Um, I just find it a really fascinating and well-designed game. So Very nice. Yeah. Do you guys happen to know what mine is? Uh, Twilight Imperium? Yeah, Twilight yeah, that's, Imperium. That's totally it. <laughs> okay, what is your favorite tabletop RPG? Not just a system, a specific release. Wow. Um... Um, I, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go with the Star Wars Galaxies. Is that what it's called? Or that was the name of the the MMO. Mm-hmm. What was the name of the recent one? Um, oh, um, just Star Wars RPG: Edge of the Empire. Edge of the, Edge of the Empire. Yeah, yeah. I'm that, gonna go with that system. one. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go with Burning Wheel. Oh, that that could have been it too. So, for what it's worth, those were my two. I was just yeah, yeah. Train. Those okay. guys are that, that, um, because they're both excellent excellent systems, and also the worlds that they represent are fantastic mm-hmm. because. Burning Wheel I've used to represent Lord of the Rings, and mm-hmm. I think it's a great translation. Thank you, Luke Crane. Um, but my answer actually is Burning Wheel. Okay. Oh, yeah. nice. So, cool. There you go. Would you say that you enjoy the character creation aspect of Burning Wheel? I think it's its own game. And the most, but you actually yeah. prefer the gameplay I would say Star so, Wars yeah. Galaxy. I, honestly, I like the or dice the mechanics. Empire, sorry. I like the dice mechanics. Yeah. Of, but what I like about Burning Wheel and leveling up is you level up the aspects and various things of your character themselves well, I mean, by, by tracking the number of times that you test something. Yeah, no, that's that's my experience with it was um, I loved the, the character creation and kind of the way your character develops in mm-hmm. Burning Wheel, mm-hmm. but the way, the actual mechanics of now you've got to do something, Very roll die, yeah. I don't like, mm-hmm. yeah. personally. And, and that's why something like uh, Chronica Fidalis, which is a total offshoot, mm-hmm. but has slight little references to that and to it, some, I would, say, I would say fate as well, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It works better. That to me nails it. I like the Fate system a lot, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I mean, whenever I've played it, I've never gone in the long term game with Fate, but I really do enjoy it. So Chris uh, is ahead by one, two, one point. He's up by one. Yeah, he's he's got four and a half points to your three and a half points, Jim. Um, <laughs> and I'm trailing it just a little bit uh, at one point. <laughs> okay. Next question for Jim: What is your favorite home console, past or present? Ooh. Oh, that's a tough question, actually. <clears throat> that is actually kind of hard, because... Oh, oh, we'll see what counts as a home console. Not handheld. Okay, no, no handhelds do not count. Mm-hmm. What about... Um, so the Switch is out. <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> that's know. That's a yet, hybrid. But yeah, but... it would probably be a hybrid, but... I'm also assuming various PCs. Like, if it's considered it's not, a computer... It's not a PC. I'm thinking, If like, it comes with a keyboard, mm-hmm. we're not. We're going to count it as what a What about PC. virtual Te- boy? Technic- well, it doesn't come with a keyboard, but PlayStation, I think maybe Xbox, too, can use keyboards. Sure, sure, but they don't they come can, with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. That's my point. So, like, if it comes with a keyboard, mm-hmm. with the expectation that you use a keyboard, yeah. we'll count not, it as a console. It's not we'll PC. It PC. It's video game console. It's not PC. It's... Okay. Um, I'm going to guess uh, NES. 
Okay. Good. Talk? I'm going to go with Super Nintendo. Okay. Chris is right. Cool. Really? Yeah. Um, I've played a ton of NES games through a combination of... Um, I had one growing up for the longest time. It was my first uh, home console. Sure. Uh, it was the home console that I first played at my grandfather's place um, house and had a lot of memories playing with him, both him playing and then later me playing and him watching me. Um, and then got a system of my own and some games and then mostly rented games because we didn't have money to buy a lot of games. Mm-hmm. But I tried just about every game I could get my hands on, including games that were terrible, mm-hmm. and played them to death. And then through the magic of emulation later, I've, I've gone back and played pretty much every game on the system. Of the magic of emulation. <laughs> it is magical. To be honest, um, there's some awesome games on the Super Nintendo. Some of my favorite games are on that system. Um, but I just don't have the same love for it, and I never actually owned an SNES ever. Mm. So I, I played one at a friend's place at one, like a little bit, but um, you know, I did have that experience playing Street Fighter II in the neighborhood, uh, which a lot of kids mm-hmm. that grew up around my time did. Mm-hmm. But I never actually owned the system. So I didn't, don't really have the same connection to it that I do. That no, makes the sense. Original. Whatever you do, Chris, don't say ROM hacks. <laughs> oh. If you could play only one game for the rest of your life, what would it be? Huh. Do you want to narrow this down to video games? Yes. Yes. Wait. Yeah. Video games or LARPing. <laughs> there you go. Oh, okay. there you go. Okay. Nero, all the way. Now are you are you chained to a chair with like your eyelids held open? No, I just you, you can't. <laughs> Like you just you're forever playing until like you collapse no, in front you of your keyboard. No, you have to one game forever. Okay, yeah. so you don't have to be playing it forever. Yeah. So my answer for Chris is going to be something in the Fire Emblem series. I don't know if that's. I don't know if that answer is going to be sufficient. Be more precise then. Um, let me see. Um, I don't even think it's something in Fire Emblem. Well, then give me the whole series. Since uh, I'm wrong. <laughs> hold on. Let me think here. I figure it's going to be something that, he, that that Chris feels like he can play for a very long period of time. Um, over and over again, even though he likes Persona, you can't just pick one of those games. You you can't really play them. I mean, you could play them more than once, but that's kind of it. Mm-hmm. It's not really that variant. So I'm going to say, it, it never says you can't play with other people. So I'm going to say Mario Kart. Now, which one? If I had to pick one, I don't know if I do because Doc picked Fire Emblem as a series. Mm-hmm. If I had to pick a Mario Kart, I picked the most recent one, just because it has like the most. I, th- I think it's t- it's kind of gone like about as far as the series can go. The only one that I thought is even worth going back and playing at this point is Double Dash. Mm. But I'm just going to say Mario Kart in general. I'm so confident that Mario is wrong, I will give you all Mario games. <laughs> so that's fine. Uh, Civ 6. Civ 6? Really? Um, because oh, wow. it is a very deep game, and it's different every time you play it. Um, I so know you played Civ 6. Yeah, I do. Not, not a ton. Um, I need to get back into playing it, but I figure like if I just had to pick the one game... That I think could sustain me. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a board game in a sense, yeah, um, and sense. it's a little bit different every time you play. So, um, and each given playthrough could be a very long one. Although you saying Mario Kart made me think that maybe my answer should have been Smash Bros. Yeah, I was, Smash Bros was my other choice. Oh. I was I was I was waffling between Mario yeah. Kart and Smash Bros because they're games you can play with other people. Mm-hmm. And bring people in, and it's a different experience. Yeah, that's true. And there's that's a true. lot of different things you can mm-hmm. do in it. And actually, Smash Bros, more so than Civ, has been something that, like, even if I'm just, say, editing a podcast, I'll play a little bit of Smash Bros on my 3DS just to sort of pass time. So, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah. So but I think the, po- the point is neither of you was right. I think, I think <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. what I got out of that was that I deserve at least half a point because I was the closest. <laughs> That's what I took from this conversation. <laughs> you caused him to change his answer. I know. That's, that's, well, that's I didn't say I actually was. changed it. I just said maybe it should have been. There you go. That's good enough for me. <laughs> All right. Um, Doc. Yes. What is your favorite arcade game? Ooh. As in, you're actually at the cabinet. Actually playing. Actually playing and arc- not playing wow. the home version of the arcade game. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. I saw this one in here. I that stood out to me. That is a super fantastic question. Hmm. Oh, and I picked this one because I was curious. I honestly don't know yeah. what you think. Um, huh. hmm. well, you got a 1 in 200,000 chance yeah. of being right. I'm going to say, um, just for nostalgia's sake, and because it is a pretty cool game, um, the old Star Wars arcade game. Like the original one where you're going into the um, Death Star... That's a really yeah. good answer. It's a good game, and That's I figured you've. Really pl- I, I assume you've logged a lot of hours. Back, <laughs> I assume you've logged a lot of hours in it. So, that's my pick. Huh. Um, I'm going to steer away from Pac-Man just because it feels a little bit too generic. Um, 
And I'm just going to take a wild guess and say the Jurassic Park shooter. That's another really good answer. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. I actually spent a lot of time in the shooter cabinets. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's a good one. The, oh, like House the of the Dead? Undersea one, uh, undersea one, the House of the Dead, all pretty much any of those where you're you're on rail basically, but mm-hmm. it's it's kind of a rail shooter mm-hmm. in the it, it's the it's the early model for the the modern mobile mm-hmm. rail shooters. What was mm-hmm. the one uh, was it Time Splitters that has the pedal? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah time, time, crisis. Time, crisis. time Crisis, Time Crisis, right? Yeah, it's actually uh, one of my favorites. But it, the, the the reload mechanic on that where you have to aim away, and mm-hmm. brilliant. But my answer is actually. Star Wars Arcade. Oh, oh nice. yeah. So there we so go. You nailed it. <laughs> yeah. I thought you might be playing you, me. You, I thought you were playing me when you were I saying, like, not, I wasn't. You I did not. I didn't think I was going to get it. Gonna get that. I did not. I'm, I'm really impressed. It's a good game. Yeah. And you, I figure it's a good game. You were around in the same time period. I was. When it first came out. Us old guys got to stick together. <laughs> All right, so. Oh, this one should start some problems. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. Jim, what is your all-time favorite Computer or video game RPG? Wait, computer or video game? Right. Basically not tabletop. Oh, you just said video game. Digital RPG. Are they trying to say that computer games aren't video games? I was specifying, I was going to say just like CRPG, but then I wanted to broaden it beyond just... Yeah, CRPG is just... Now, we all know JRPGs aren't RPGs, so (laughs) that obviously can't be right. Right. Could be. That's a tough question because it is. when you say RPG, what is counting as an RPG? Right, and so this is what we're really, really asking here is, Jim, where do you draw the line, and where do we think you draw the line? Yeah, because there's I could get because there's some there's some RPGs on the computer specifically they're very mm-hmm. crunchy that I really enjoyed. Yeah, but then there's also some RPGs on on you know some consoles, right? Like that are not crunchy. Like Persona Five is not really crunchy. I mean, not it's really. It's also not really an RPG. Um, it has it's it's actually a hybrid, right. so it's an RPG and a simulation, right? But still, arguably an RPG. So what we're really asking is, does Jim think Witcher is an RPG? Does he think Zelda That's, yeah, is an RPG? Those are some good questions because I'm not going to answer those questions right now. No, right. Those right, are some right, great right questions. Write down, down your answer because I, okay. I I think I uh, I haven't I have an answer. I don't think you do. You don't think I yeah you don't think I have an answer. I promise I do. I think it's right. <laughs> okay. This is just not an easy choice. I'm going to guess Planescape Torment. It's a good guess. Yeah, that's a really good but guess. But was it correct? I don't know. So I think it's one of the Final Fantasies. I'm going to go with six. Both wrong. Mm. Um, I actually did pick Chrono Trigger. Did you? Oh, yes. oh yeah. Uh, Chrono Trigger is my favorite uh, Japanese role-playing game. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason I picked it is because I am mainly because I'm in love with the soundtrack and uh, the aesthetics. I mean, the game itself, the gameplay. The gameplay is the true metric for an RPG. <laughs> <laughs> well, the gameplay is a little dated now. There's there's some turn based RPGs that I think handle it better, mm-hmm. but I feel that the the um, music and the way that they kind of endear the cast to you is something that's always stuck with me. Um, and it's one of those games that I just can't forget. Mm-hmm. So for that reason, I pick it as my favorite. Planescape Torment was up there on my list, and so was Baldur's Gate 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, I prefer 2 to 1. Um, but ultimately, I decided to go with Chrono Trigger. To answer your question earlier, Good answer Doc, with Baldur's. Uh, Baldur's Gate, yeah. Um, it's an excellent, excellent series, yeah. but I, I actually prefer the second one, to be honest. Yeah, same engine. Um, with uh, the, I believe it's Aurora engine mm-hmm. as Fallout, the original Fallout. I think Aurora was Bioware, actually. Was it? No, I think Aurora was actually the engine that they used for Neverwinter Nights. That's actually. right. That's the one I'm yeah. thinking Which about. is originally Bioware, and then there's like an updated version they used for Neverwinter Nights too. Yeah, that's that's absolutely correct. And and they mm. shipped it with um, Neverwinter too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've actually used it before. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, bet you, I bet you used it in class if you took the. Uh, no, not for class. It was actually for job application. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. oh wow, job application. I did it. I did it for a uh, final project one time. I did it just for fun. I did a lot of playing around in the Aurora engine. Yeah, yeah. But you're right. It's not the same one. Um, but it is. But it is. I think, the it same one. The, I think it was called the Infinity Engine for uh, Baldur's Gate. That could be. That I think could so. Be. But anyway, the whole Black Isle era. Those are other good ones too. Fallout yeah. and Fallout Two. Uh, yeah. all, CRPGs. There's a lot of great ones. Um, the Witcher. I would probably. I mean, it's like an action RPG. It I don't know if we count RPG. action RPGs totally. as an RPG. Yeah, I would. Absolutely. But it's. T- I mean, I, I definitely wouldn't count any Legend of Zelda mm. as an RPG. Yeah, no, those are adventures. Except yeah. Zelda 2, mm-hmm. which I do believe counts as an that RPG. That one, sure. It's, it's, it has enough elements that I would count it as an RPG. Mm-hmm. I'll just go for this just because it's... it's. Um, I don't know if I know the answer to this one. I'm not sure you're a big MMO guy, mm-hmm. but I'm going to ask anyway. Okay. 
in which MMORPG have you logged the most time? And I think Doc and I would be able to get our answers, but I'm not so sure what it would be for Chris. Yeah, I, I know my answer very easily. Oh, me too. But also, I've played a lot of them, so... Yeah, you have. Uh, I know you've played... You've, you've logged in a lot of hours yourself yeah. in some of these. Yeah. So, well, my answer is World of Warcraft. Oh, mine would me. be too. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For me, it definitely World of Warcraft. I put in a lot of time in EverQuest, uh, AQ2, um, Dark Age of Camelot. Mm-hmm. Spent a lot of time in that. Mm-hmm. Final Fantasy XI. I spent a ton of time in FF11. Yeah. Um, Star, Star Wars. Wars. Yeah. Um, the the uh, the newest the newer one. Um, yeah, Old Republic. Yeah. <laughs> Star Wars Galaxies. I spent some time in that game. Was horrible. Yeah. Unfortunately. Um, that one was. I'm gonna say Final Fantasy XIV. It's a really good answer, actually. Yeah, it might be. I'm not sure he's even played it, to be honest with you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't remember like um, MMOs because I don't. I, I, Chris doesn't strike me as a WoW guy. No, I don't, I don't think he's uh, played a lot of WoW. He's played so. any WoW. Whatever the answer is, it's not going to be fantasy. So um, maybe not. Wow. I know he likes Final Fantasy. That's why I picked 14. But I don't know if that's necessarily the correct mm-hmm. answer. That's a great. It's a great guess. Right. Not knowing nothing, it's a great guess. Um, I'm gonna go with Star Wars. I'm yeah, gonna with, I'm gonna go with Old Republic. That would be that would be my other guess too. And that's, yeah. an, that's another good guess. Okay, uh, the answer actually is well. Oh, you're uh, kidding really? me! Yeah. I don't believe you. <laughs> I call foul. So I that liked is. Swotor better, but I played much less of Swotor. Did you ever play the Final Fantasy either eleven did, or fourteen? I didn't play fourteen though. But you played eleven? No, not eleven. You're kidding I had, me! I had friends who played eleven, but my computer at the time couldn't handle it, so uh, I really so wanted you, to play. 11. You like the modern Final Fantasies, which I don't, usually don't like, but mm-hmm. I've actually logged more hours in both eleven and fourteen than you. That's hilarious. <laughs> that yeah. is. And I didn't even like either of those games. Well, I played I none of it, so there you yeah. go. Wow, okay. Yes, but World of Warcraft, I had a lot of friends who were really into that, and so I kind of just jumped on the bandwagon, and um, I didn't play it a ton, especially compared to my friends, but... You, you heal class, didn't you? Um, actually, I played a damage damage priest. No! I played Shadow Priest, yeah. Wow. And then the sec- my second... You know a guy? Alliance and my second, or Horde? Uh, Horde. Horde. I was an undead Shadow Priest, and then my second time through, I was a Blood Elf Mage. Only noobs play Horde. <laughs> what? Woke only, only, hashtag woke jump. Only, only adults. <laughs> on, on, our, on our server, Horde was the cool one. So no, that's that was actually <laughs> on our server. Horde was the adult one. Yeah, well, yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly. actually what I what what I wanted to say because that was normally the case. Yeah. So that's why when I was on, I went, I swapped servers. I started out Horde and I swapped servers with some friends, and we all said, okay, we're going to Alliance because we want people to think that we're a bunch of dumb kids. <laughs> you can take. We did it on purpose because like the Alliance was like so outclassed in that in that in that server. We yeah. wanted, we wanted that challenge and build up a. A league, and so we basically it was like anyone that was not like a little kid basically joined our guild, and so we had actually a really elite alliance guild. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. For that reason, specifically for that reason. All right. Yeah. Okay. Now we're gonna move on to the but lightning round. Both. Lightning round. Uh, this one, we're actually all three gonna answer the same question, uh, and then we're gonna try to guess the other two's answer. So basically, I guess we'll get points for each one we get right, um, and then if I guess if neither person can guess ours, then we get a point. Does that sound good to you guys? Yeah. Sure. All right. So the first lightning round question. If you were to start a non-gaming solo podcast, what would it be about? Non-gaming related. Mm-hmm. I have so many. I have some pretty good ideas, but I'd have to find the right person to go in with me. Well, a solo podcast. Solo? Uh, okay. I could still do that. Okay. So I, I think I think Chris would probably um, do something on the, the, the art of sound editing. <laughs> That's my um, guess. That's your guess for Chris. Yeah, that's my guess. Are we are we just going around guessing for everyone? Yeah, yeah, just couldn't yeah. guess. Um, so I guess we'll guess for me, then we'll guess sure. for Doc, then we'll guess for you. So let's see, Chris. Hmm. I don't think you would do sound editing because I think you just you probably don't want to talk about that <laughs> since that's what you actually. <laughs> but do. it's fascinating. I'm, it would be fascinating, and I think it'd be actually a show I'd want to listen to. But I don't think Chris would want to talk about it. I so <laughs> and then to edit it. himself. I totally wouldn't listen to you it. Would <laughs> edit himself, yeah. I've edited myself before. I know, but like <laughs> editing yourself as like a solo. Mm. About a, to- about a topic about you editing yourself is kind of just... It's, <laughs> it's too meta. It's, it's, it's very recursive. It's just too, uh, yeah. It's, so I'm going to say... Um, exception. Right. Fast cars, loose women, drugs. <laughs> that's and that's <laughs> three topics. Yeah. Oh, geez, man. Um, I'm just going to go for an easy... Well... You think you know a guy. I mean, really. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't... That's the point of this game. Yeah, I don't know what I, what he would do to be honest with you. So beard maintenance. <laughs> I don't put much effort into that, honestly. <laughs> I'm just gonna say like I'm just gonna say um, just like movies, like movie reviews, like pop, popular Ooh. movies, modern Good movies. Good answer. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to be specific, so I'm mm-hmm. not because mm-hmm. I don't want to say movies is too broad. So I'm mm-hmm. saying like as movies come out, you're reviewing modern movies. 
yeah, yeah. People are talking about. Okay. Uh, my answer that I wrote down is storytelling. Um, so that's pretty close. Oh, um, of course. Okay, that but, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So, of but I didn't get it. So. it. So part of it would probably be like maybe some lit reviews, maybe some movie reviews, that sort of thing. But it'd be kind of the art of storytelling, probably. Okay, I could see that. Very nice. Yeah. Cool. All right, uh, Doc. Okay. Uh, yeah, so what do, what do you I, think I get a point for that one. I think it's going to be related to education. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's got to be related to education and related to theology. So somehow somehow putting those two together. I would say cool. peanut butter, peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> I would say uh, cultural apologetics. That's, we basically That's said very the same. precise. We basically said the same thing. <laughs> but very <sure>. precise <laughs> there, Chris. <laughs> he got the actual term for it. I just said what it was. Yeah, well, but... it's what I just graduated right, with, yeah. and it's literary and cultural apologetics. Right. So that's, Ooh, that's what that's I was going. Exactly yeah, right. That's what we were yeah. both going. So for, that, for those who don't know, that we can would both be, get points for that. Uh, sure. You know, talking about authors like C.S. Lewis yeah, and J.R.R. Right. Tolkien, who used techniques of smuggled theology mm-hmm. in their works. Both excellent there writers. Mm-hmm. Very influential. Yeah, extremely. In case you didn't know. Yeah. Who's that Tolkien guy? Yeah, that's the that's, Tolkien fella. That's the guy they hired to do the book version of that very popular movie that came out by Peter Jackson. <laughs> and what would Jim's solo cop podcast be about? Good luck because I have so I had so many ideas. I'm sitting here like, oh, I could do this. Oh, but this would be pretty interesting too. Oh, yeah, I could do this one too. And then you said solo, and I was like, oh man, I had some really good ones for other, get with other people. So yeah, but see, so I, 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 think, I had to narrow it down. I think but there's a lot you could do. There's a lot of ideas I could kick around. The but. one that kind of like comes through strongest for me would be soccer. Interesting. 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 I'm going to go with um, pub reviews, like alcohol tasting pub reviews, these, local breweries. These are both ideas that I didn't actually think of, but they're both good. So my, what I actually said was, and I wrote this down, um, Kung Fu cinema or like chop hockey oh, films nice. from yeah, yeah. like the 70s and 80s. I can see oh, that. Very nice. Basically. Going back, watching some old ones, and then talking about it mm-hmm. could be pretty okay. interesting. Very nice. So what I've learned from this pro- procedure is that um, I don't know you guys at all. <laughs> Chris is still by one. Yeah, we're we're neck and neck. Okay. Doc, you're... I got a point. Oh, yeah, that's right. Doc got a point earlier, too. I'm on the board. Just not even close. I don't need points to be validated. Well, that isn't that convenient. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something a loser would say. <laughs> Next lightning round question. What would you say is your role on the podcast? Yeah, this will be interesting because we'll see what we think we are and what the other <laughs> what everyone else I know. I'm like, I'm going to get in so much trouble. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I guess we'll start. Uh, do we just want to go in the same order? No, yeah, let's go in a different order okay. this time. So let's we'll start with Doc then. Okay. Okay. Um, I would say um, I think Doc definitely sees himself as sort of like the resident um, academic. Mm-hmm. Even though we're all academic, I think Doc wants to. He, he has the PhD. Yeah, well, he, wa- <laughs> he wants to exude that f- in the show, though. He mm-hmm. wants it to come across. And so uh, Doc typically is tries to come a little bit more prepared. Mm-hmm. Um, so he, I would say he does a little bit more research and tries to, you know, he's a little bit more uh, ready and on the ball. So I would say, I guess, um, the one who's more academic, studious, um, prepared... I don't Last know. time I wear I'm my naming, tweed suit. I'm just naming, yeah. Just, <laughs> I'm just naming traits, but that, that's kind of the, way, the direction I'm going with it. Chris, um, I agree with you. Um, I would sort of say the academic one and the kind of the tra- traditionalist, the academic oh, and the traditionalist. Oh I suppose. I mean, yours is more insulting than we're, his. We're calling <laughs> we're calling you Doc, so I think it's pretty clear you're yeah. you're going for the academic. It's because I'm short and hairy. <laughs> True. Good point. Oh. That too. You, you want to know my real answer? Sure, what I, sure. What I wrote? What did you I wrote, wrote Nutty Professor. There we go. Yeah. That's so, a, there you go. There you go. I think I got that. I think no, you got guys it. nailed it. I think we got you it. You absolutely cool. nailed it. Um, I, would, I would give that to Jim um, if I had to choose between the, the mm-hmm. two answers because he said, we call you, Doc. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. So then there we go. So, Chris, so maybe, I'm now caught up. Maybe a half for me. <laughs> or, fine, there you go. Give Chris a half. Sure. Give, him, yeah. give, him, give him up to the full, <laughs> full point there to cover the, the half point. Yeah. Okay. Guessing Jim. Um... What did I put? Retro guy and controversial. You, you like you, li- you, you listed two traits. You, you like to bring the. Uh, He's retroversial. <laughs> yeah, retroversial. Um, well, no, I think I think that's it. Is that you were you were the retro guy and you like to bring the uh, the hot opinions and uh, stir up controversy and play devil's advocate. Okay. Doc. Um, I, I think you think that you're the pragmatist, the practical one. That you're the one who brings the the logic and order to the show, um, 
No, I, I'm totally <laughs> making this up here. This is not true. At all. That's not what I want to bring to um, the show. You, 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 you are Loki. You are the. You are. You are chaos. Cha- chaotic neutral. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's what I put. Um, basically, none of I, I, none of you really got the exact words. So I'll just give it to both of you. Okay. Mm. I, I wrote down um, pot stir stirrer mm-hmm. provocateur ranter. Mm-hmm. Nice. I'm, I am. Yeah. But yes, controversy. He's the one who brings the pot. All right. Yes. And stirs it. Yes. Excellent. What about this guy? <laughs> um, Chris, uh, the editor. No. Well, <laughs> well, I was Chris, going to say obviously his actual role is, is editor, yeah. but we but, need to exclude that because yeah, during but, recording uh, on the right. show, on no, the no, show, he, Chris, Chris always tries to um, like whenever I bring in one of my hot takes, Chris, <laughs> Chris is always like, well. I can kind of see it from their side. Like he always is trying to look for a valid reason why something is. So he's he's trying to um, reach out to everyone. He wants to reach across the table and try to find common ground. All right, here's my dollar. That's what I see. right here. Yeah. All right, here's my dollar. Okay. Exact word, mediator. Yeah, that that's what basically what I said. But it is basically what you said. I'm nailing it down with my dollar on the table. Mediator yeah, is what but I mean. That's what I said. In crayon, orange <laughs> on that piece of paper. <laughs> Okay. Um, I actually did say mediator. Yeah! I said mediator and story guy. Okay, so oh, okay. we both get the point, but you yeah. do get to keep your But dollar. I get the dollar. You get to keep your dollar. <laughs> I get my own dollar. So point to Doc and Jim. <laughs> <laughs> that doubled my points. That's got to be worth something, right? <laughs> okay, so last lightning round question. What gaming opinion do you have that you know your co-hosts don't share? That I know? Yeah, well, I don't know. I've got plenty of gaming opinions y'all don't share. That's a little... This is interesting because there's two components to this. Mm-hmm. There's the what do you think he's thinking, and then there's the uh, no, what you think we don't think. We totally do think. Mm-hmm. And so it's going to be, wow, it's just, this is complex. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm not even sure. Don't second screen this, guys. This is important. you got to <laughs> tune in right now or you're going to miss this. Okay. So I guess we'll start with Jim this time. Okay. I know. Right, go for it. I think I think Jim put that he believes that we don't believe that retro games are better, better than modern current games. The new Vegas is the best 3D Fallout. Oh, everybody thinks that. Do we? No. <laughs> are you serious? That's my least favorite. Oh, you're just wrong on that one. <laughs> I know. I see. <laughs> but that's not what I wrote down. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I wrote down, being controversial again, Mm -hmm. so um, walking sims, flying sims, basically games where you're just looking around in an environment are not video games. Mm -hmm. Not a video game. It might be an interactive narrative. It might be an interactive experience. Oh, yeah. Not a game. That that phrase, not a game, mm-hmm. actually went through my head. Mm-hmm. Listen, Jim's going to say something is not a game. Gotta say it. <laughs> and then that took me to Gotta where... say it. Uh-huh. Yep, gotta say it. So is that in pain that neither of us share? Gone Home, not a game. Right. No Man's Sky, not a game. Um, honestly, for the most part, Minecraft, not a game. But Minecraft at least has building, so I guess it wouldn't count in my yeah. explanation. So that's nonsense. But basically, if you're inside <laughs> a, a, a environment and mm-hmm. all you're doing is exploring that environment... I stopped <laughs> listening to you whenever you said Walking Sims weren't a game. Name one that you think is. Well, for starters, uh, No Man's Sky. It's totally a game. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How do you beat No Man's Sky? Well, you don't. Okay, then. Not a game. Well, you're saying that it has to have a victory condition? It has to have a victory condition. And, and see, that's, that's where we differ on. That was in your class. Yeah. You have to have a victory condition. No, you taught the class. It what, said, you said I, it. What I said was... Oh, you're changing now. No, hold on. Oh. What I said was that every, everything that does have a victory condition, we will call a game. It, it's on video. You can reference this. Okay. Go, go see my, my God well, and Video Games well, we're, lecture <laughs> last we're, year. We're calling, we're calling those games. Yeah. Okay. And I definitely, I definitely get your point of view, and I think it's a valid one. But I, you know, that I have a much broader view of what I can define well, as a game. I, so. I, I would say this: if all you're doing is you're exploring a room, mediator, you're exploring a room, right? <laughs> if you're exploring a room, how is that? That's not a game because you're interacting with it. So what? If I, if I, I'm interacting with this crayon right now. I'm moving it around. The, I'm moving it around. This is not a game because there are no rules. You think this is a game? <laughs> <laughs> you, you think this I'm, crayon is a game? You see what I'm saying? What is, what is the purpose? Is it to interact with the space and ha- experience a story? If so, that is interactive storytelling. That's not a game. Stay tuned that's for inter- episode 101 <laughs> through 200 to answer <laughs> that more question. more hot takes. <laughs> All right. Hashtag woke gem. Get it trending. <laughs> okay. Inbox at backward-compatible.com. <laughs> mm. 
All right. Chris believes that the Sonic Sonic is still the best franchise in the world. I, I, mean, <laughs> I don't. We don't believe that, but I don't know if you wrote that down. Um, hmm. It's something about story. It, it's totally something about story. It's like Sonic the Hedgehog is the greatest story of all time in video uh, games. Yeah, there you go. Uh, no, it's something like um, video games can't tell open ended stories. They they can only t- uh, but but um, if you if you truly want an open ended story, you have to play an RPG. But that's something that we all agree with. So I don't think that like I agree but, with that statement. But do you think that I think that we don't agree? I do. <laughs> but but if you didn't, then wouldn't you have failed that question if we all agree with it? Yeah, that's the whole good point. The, well, point. That, just because you should be, it should be an invalid, and uh, yeah. both of us get points. You? <laughs> the thing is, I'm not sure I actually do agree with that statement. I agree I think, with that statement. I think mm-hmm. that he would think that I do agree with that statement. Yeah, but I can talk myself out of it. So mm-hmm. that's, I don't know. I, I agree with that statement. Mm-hmm. That's worth talking about it being yeah. on a show at some mm-hmm. point. This is this is tricky. We don't um, we don't know what you think that we don't think. <laughs> we think what you think. You think that we don't think. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I got it. Um, you believe that. Are you are in full sub- – well, but Doc wouldn't care about that at all. I don't know. It's hard to think of something that, you, I, I would that, think that neither being, of us – I think that being indifferent toward an opinion would be the same as not sharing it. Yeah. I, I guess agree. that could be true. Yeah. Okay. True uh, innovation is only occurring in the indie space. That's what you wrote. Hmm. Oh, I would totally disagree with that, so that's fair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would disagree with it, and then I would say go play more near, <laughs> and then you would know there that that's not true. There you go. Um, I'm going to say – I don't think you wrote that either. I'm going to say – you completely don't care at all about um, censorship or localization in games. You think it's totally cool. You love it. You love it when people are covered up. You you also want all um, female characters in games to wear full-on burkas. <laughs> not for that last part. Strike the last part. But everything else. Okay. You're cool with censorship, which I'm not cool with. What I wrote down and is... Doc is indifferent, so that's why... That's why. No, too many ankles. <laughs> what I wrote down is Majora's Mask is the best Zelda. Wow. We were so close. Yeah, we, that, I almost said that. No, I didn't. <laughs> that's definitely something I disagree You're with. You're also wrong. Mm-hmm. You're very wrong. Very well, that's wrong. why it's infinity yeah. we don't share. <laughs> okay. What did I say? Well, I know, I know Doc is also a story guy. True. So I might say something like, I might be tempted, I shall, I shall say, to say something like, oh, a story can't be, it can't be a great game if it doesn't have a good story. But then I know... That Doc doesn't agree with that because before we've talked about puzzle games and he has agreed that Tetris is a great game. Oh, those aren't games. Um, <laughs> no, don't, don't be absurd. We all, know, we all know that Tetris is the perfect game. Um, well, it could be something simple where it's just you think Beautiful Apocalypse is the best genre and you know that we don't agree with that statement. Oh, come on. You know me better than that? Yeah, that, that would be pretty obvious. That's too easy. <laughs> uh, you might have said it. You might have put it. Might be I might have. Playing, playing me right now. I might, trying to. I might right now. <laughs> It might be Star Wars all over again. Yeah, could be. I'm just going to throw out a random guess that mobile games aren't terrible. Interesting. I'm going to say, um, I'm just going to stick with my beautiful apocalypse is the best genre. Like I said, this, this is such an open ended question. It's really hard could to be guess. <laughs> ah, what mobile if, games are important. <laughs> he almost got it. He, we're not, we almost. can't count that, though. This Point was, goes to Doc. This was in parentheses, though. Here's my actual answer. Okay. Farmville was revolutionary. Not good, but revolutionary. I would agree with that, actually. Farmville was revolutionary. No. You don't think Farmville was revolutionary? Well, it, in the sense of... It fundamentally I mean changed it, the portion of the and game. And I well, mean it on. in the sense let's, of let's, mobile games are important. And here's, what I, and here's what I mean it in the sense of. I would agree with that statement if we were, if we were comparing it to the French Revolution, in which <laughs> all of the nobility had their heads chopped off. <laughs> and then all the people within the revolution also started to get, get you know called out on, and if they weren't hardcore enough or into the resistance enough, they also got their heads chopped off. And it was a big old head chopping party. And ultimately was not a good thing. Then yes, Farmville. <laughs> to our is a French revolution. listeners who as we remember are number one. <laughs> number one non US listeners. Yeah. Um, that is hashtag woke Jim. W O K E J I M. Or right into the gym bag segment. <laughs> the gym bag segment. <laughs> the hate mail segment. Did I actually score that? Yeah, Doc gets a point on that for sure. Okay. Because that we didn't actually guess. You didn't quite you got really close yeah. to the mobile Chris, I, I would say that Chris maybe that would be half point. But, no, but all you did was we'll mention mobile talk. games. Yeah. Plus, the statement that you made, like, I would have agreed with. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. 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 Woo. All right. Basically, like a random marathon. Okay. That was cool. <laughs> cool. All right. So, final score. Um, looks like Doc with four, yeah. Jim with uh, nine and a half, oh. and me with ten. 
So by half a point. Yeah. Half a point. Woo! <laughs> See, I knew that half point would go to everyone. Uh, but yeah, so just to kind of start winding this down, I thought we'd all share kind of, you know, a favorite moment from the podcast and maybe some things that we have, like, you know, closing comments, final takeaways. Uh, but first, I'm going to go ahead and play uh, one more thing that uh, Nick has sent to us in his write-in. I think my favorite moment from Backward Compatible goes all the way back to episode two when Richard, Jim, and Chris were talking about some gaming confessions. I think it was like a two truths and a lie sort of game format. It turns out that Chris's true confession was that he played every single ending of Shadow the Hedgehog, and the the reaction from Jim and Richard just mortified. They were they were ashamed to be on a podcast with this man. So Richard, do you have any questions first off? Yeah, okay. So in Shadow the Hedgehog, mm-hmm. you're saying that you did every... Because that game has like branching yes. story, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. Like, you did every single one? Yep. There's no <laughs> way. There's no... How, how extensive? Yeah, I, I don't... I mean, I didn't play much of that game. Well, I don't know exactly how long the game is because it's a piece of garbage, and, but... <laughs> this was the one with the, like, with the werehog, right? Or am I thinking of a different no, one? No, no. Werehog this, with Sonic Unleashed. Oh, okay. That was the one that I played some uh, of, and it was pretty bad. Also, too. I know that. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. I think this one might be true. Oh, he's, a, no. he's an out of the closet Sanic fanboy. Oh man! All right. What was the second one? The second one was a- Chris was an out of the closet Sanic fanboy from then on, and I don't think he'll ever be able to live that down. To be honest, and nor do I want to. <laughs> well, uh, you probably should. <laughs> Well, thanks for sharing, Nick. Um, but yeah, do you guys have any sort of like favorite moments or closing comments? No. No. <laughs> this whole thing has just been a mistake. <laughs> I, uh, Keep just, in mind, I wasn't there for the Sanic moment. That's true. And now that I'm aware of it, mm-hmm. uh, it's been fun. This will be my last. <laughs> for, for me, um, I think, first of all, I think we've all improved quite a bit when it comes to um, the format mm-hmm. and being comfortable talking in front of the mic and... Um, yeah, that part's been a lot of fun. Right. And mm-hmm. I think we've we've grown quite a bit since I, it just kind of reminded me when mm-hmm. you went back to 30 and I kind of realized just how long I've been back mm-hmm. from, you know, how being out of school and how many episodes we've done since then mm-hmm. and how much I think that we've we've improved yeah, over yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I think we've learned more about our own kind of takes and tastes and uh uh how to articulate those and how to kind of not that we never thought critically, but it definitely changes the way you look at things when you have to go and talk about it on a podcast. So right, um, I've also I've also learned to be more diplomatic and not as controversial. <laughs> hey, that, all right, I'm totally I, I'm totally serious I, about that. I did something. I'm totally, <laughs> I, I, no, 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 I'm serious about yeah, that. Yeah. From the beginning, I've all I've from the very very start, I've actually been pretty careful. You mm-hmm. know, I like to throw in some controversy, th- stir things up, mm-hmm. but I don't want to go too far because mm-hmm. I understand the audience that we're trying to go for. We're not actually an mm-hmm. e podcast, even though we put that on there. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to get too explicit. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to keep it somewhat academic. There you uh, go. There you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I think I've gotten a lot more comfortable talking on the mic, which is helpful. Mm-hmm. Talking with people. Yeah. Um, favorite moments? I think we've had a lot of really good moments, good shows. Oh, yeah. I think our, my, I don't know if I can name one single moment, mm-hmm. but I think um, a lot of the times where I feel like we've we have a really good discussion, and then we come away from it thinking. You know, after we turn we turn the mic off and we're packing up, we're like, oh, yeah, we really hit on a lot of great points. Mm-hmm. Those are kind of my – or not even during the show, like after the show where you realize, oh, yeah, we were really on that show. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Not so fun moments where we, we turn the mic off and we're like, yeah, that show was – Yeah. Was, good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, do you have maybe then like um, you know one or two favorite episodes you can think of where you think that happened? Um, episode zero. The lost <laughs> – no, not that one. Didn't exist. Not that one. Um, actually, last week's episode, I thought we, we did a really good job. We had a good topic. Um, both of our topics really on scale. I, I'm just naming mm-hmm. recent ones because the most recent ones that I've listened to. But mm-hmm. both of our um, episodes on scale I thought were really good. Um, scale of Game Worlds, where mm-hmm. we had two kind of mm-hmm. back-to-back. Talked about Zelda, Horizon, and Nier. And I guess what we're really talking about here is how much compression is too much compression. And I am arguing that Horizon Zero Dawn went too far with its compression. Yeah. Basically, if it had been about twice the size or even four times the size, I think it would have been fine. If it had been 12 times the size, that would have been too big. Yeah. I'm not arguing for a one-to-one. I never argue for a one-to-one. No. Okay? And people here, have been saying that about GTA for a while, talking about why can't why is the city of, of L.A. not bigger? Why, does, why are they... Making, and it's because it's, they're ignorant. It, honestly, right. if, if I... If I walk from my house down to the coffee uh, uh, store, 
right, the coffee shop that's down on the corner uh, next to the game store and the comic book store. Uh, this is my frame of reference for everything. Mm -hmm. It takes me 15 minutes to get there and then 15 minutes to get back. Right. If I'm playing a game and it takes me more than two to three minutes to get to a place, that's too long. Yeah. That's way too long. So what, what that example right there is a one to five compression, right? Mm -hmm. Three divided by 15 divided by three is a five. Anyway. Math um, is hard. Numbers, numbers, math, math, math. <laughs> okay, so, so what I'm really saying here is compression is good. It's a very good thing. And there is an art to making that mountain look like a big mountain that is there and far away when it's really small and close. The problem comes whenever I can then go to that mountain and climb that mountain and also recognize that it is literal Pike's Peak. Mm -hmm. Skyrim did not have this problem of scaling. For me, I did not feel like a giant walking around. No, no, Why? I didn't either. Because it was a fantasy world. Yeah. I do think we've had some good uh, call-in shows. Like, I think... Uh, Bradley, mm -hmm. when he when he calls in, he's we've had some good discussions. Yeah, I, I think with him. I think the ones with our guests are some of our. That's best. what I was going to say. Yeah. Um, honestly, if I had to pick one single favorite episode mm -hmm. of all, it would probably be the one that um, Alex and Isaac mm -hmm. were on. Procedural generation. Yeah. When I try to rate the efficacy of a, of a generative content system, I, I do it a lot less in terms of how many can it make. It's a lot more how long before I get bored of the content it generates. There's actually been some research into this. Uh, Jillian Smith and Jim Whitehead came up with something called expressive range analysis. Okay. Which basically breaks down how expressive and non-boring <laughs> any given generator is going to be. That's wonderful. So it's a, an actual metric. Yes. That's fantastic. So if we were to take a game like, um, pardon the pun, Binding of Isaac, mm -hmm. and then, then could we uh, cr like actually create that metric on, on, its, on its level of boringness? Michael Cook's actually working on a tool in Unity to automatically rate generative algorithms. Mm -hmm. And so if you feed the numbers in, you should be able to get a general idea. You'd have to know exactly how the generator worked, of course. Of course. Well, and, and, and the, the big tough design question to that is for this generator, you have to create um, some kind of metric or analytical method that figures out how different it is compared to another. That that one just blew my mind because I knew so little about it, and mm -hmm. those guys are just so amazing in, in mm -hmm. the field. we got to have them back and, and do a you know, do another one on the Bring them back, because yeah. I wasn't even there for that episode. I know. There you go. That's um, why it was your favorite. It, it was one of the reasons. No, <laughs> no, no. Um, but, you know, I, I, would, I would echo that. I think that having guests and doing that when we can is uh, a wonderful uh, sort of change and, and slice. Mm -hmm. brings in new voices and that sort of a thing. Um, so I think that that's really exciting mm -hmm. when we can do that. Um, I, I would also say that our episode... On VR with Phil, mm -hmm. I learned so much, and yeah. that's that's been the big thing for me. Oh yeah, no, we I think we learned, I learned a lot during that episode. I learned so much mm -hmm. just doing this with you guys because mm -hmm. I know that when I'm playing a game during the week, I'm going to be talking about it mm -hmm. within the within two weeks, and it, it changes the way I play. Yeah, I, I'm an, I'm an active player. I'm still um, engaging in the scholarship of game design from a player perspective, and I, I said this recently. I think. I think designers need to be playing mm -hmm. 20 hours a week. I think they, they have to. Be playing. to. Yeah. And, and any, anybody who's looking at it from a purely academic standpoint isn't doing it right. Any more than somebody who's, you know, claims to be an athlete that isn't practicing. I think that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Or a writer yeah. who isn't reading. I echo your thoughts on that, too. Mm. I think some of my favorite episodes, aside from the ones where we've had guests, which are always really awesome, uh, I always really enjoy the ones where we kind of get a little bit more academic. And, uh, like, for example, thinking back to, I think it was episode three, we talked about avatars. Mm. Um, yeah. And we kind of, we sort show. of had, like, a good discussion about, like, kind of coming up with definitions and even creating some new definitions. Um, things along those lines are always fun. Uh, and I, I can't think of, like, a favorite moment. I'm sure if I was to, like, listen to the whole podcast again, I'd probably be able to identify the one. But mm -hmm. there were a few that came to mind that I really enjoyed. Um, back in episode seven, I think, actually, Doc, this is your first one mm -hmm. as a guest, uh, when we did the video game haiku. Um, and oh. I came up with a bunch of haiku based on games. That was kind of a fun exercise for me. Splinters and Knuckles. 
Uh, I saw Jim first. Oh, I wasn't sure. Okay. Um, I actually don't have a guess. Wait, wait, I'll just say... Um, you can pass if you don't want to guess, because Will had a guess, too. Uh, oh, okay. I'll just say Mortal Kombat. Incorrect. Yeah. I'm going to go on the pun and say Ninja Turtles. Incorrect. Man. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know, I guess the pun. I knew it. I knew it was coming. All right, second line. Empire built with blood and sweat. A subtle hissing. Oh, is it Minecraft? It is Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. I'm done. I'm done. So the whole haiku again. What's the matter? <laughs> Splinters and knuckles. Empire built with blood and sweat. A subtle hissing. Splinters and yeah, beating up the trees. Yeah, mm -hmm. Got it. I'm actually got kind it. of proud of that one because it had the whole like uh, reversal with the last line the haiku that yeah. I'm going. So. Very nice. Thank you. Jim's Arkham Knight rant came to mind. Uh, the, oh, the, oh God. the legendary Batman ban. <laughs> yes, Batman ban. I think we need to agree um, that Jim is not allowed to utter the word Batman ever again. <laughs> Has he disgraced the name of Batman? No, I think I just maybe said it one too many times. Uh, that Batman, was that like, Batman. yeah, I said it Batman. probably a thousand times. I'm <laughs> actually worried for his health, um, his blood pressure. <laughs> oh, that's why, okay. Yeah, it's gotcha. personal concern because, you know, we care about you, sir. Okay. We do. We Fair care enough. about you so, deeply. So for the rest of the episode, we're not going to mention Batman. <laughs> the, yeah, the, or the, uh, the B word. The B, the B word. word. Doc's rainbow snake when we were talking about Ho'okam. Was a funny moment. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> there are other metaphors, but uh, anyway, it's a family show. Um, really, what this is is an art game. Um, so, so that's where you have to come at this from. Is the designers were intending to have something that you could explore. I'm an explorer. I dig it. Um, you could have this very zen kind of experience, engaging with, oh, look, I'm now in this world, and little little people are jumping on my big rainbow snake, and I'm taking them around a <laughs> theme park. They're with the family show. And, yeah. <laughs> you know... Um, this is just going downhill really quick. Whatever, well, it's, it's, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just reporting like the facts, snake. guys. <laughs> just reporting the facts. That's right. um, Don't kill the messenger. I, I, I didn't make the snake, I just wrote it. <laughs> you must be this tall to ride Doc's rainbow snake. <laughs> Okay. I would say that the actual name of the rainbow serpent is actually called Long Mover, but I don't think it's going to help any. <laughs> wow. No, that doesn't help at all. Um, it makes it much worse. That's right. <laughs> How do you beat the game, Doc? Is that what you asked me? Okay, that's right. let yes. me tell you. Um, How do you unlock achievements? In each of the 17 uh, worlds, let's call them worlds, which you can get through to by doing various things to unlock the portals and this and that, um, there is another snake somewhere and you have to figure out how to release that snake and once you've released rainbow snake um then we all get metal gear solid five or whatever it was i was gonna say so liquid snake solid snake rainbow snake right <laughs> um, rainbow snake. but but it, rainbow I, I snake feel... is the one that you find on tumblr like hangs out on tumblr <laughs> right. yeah. it was like a really stupid joke but we all had like a really good genuine laugh there at the table and so that was pretty funny meanwhile you're, the look on your face was kind of uh quite amusing too uh, um our first thanksgiving special was fun just because we had seven people there and it was just kind of and my wife yeah the, the one appearance we did the, uh, the uh, massive actually, game show right she wasn't in that one she was in the um in the following one no she was in um famicom feud that's right yeah. oh i mixed those two episodes yeah up. i did too yeah but that was a good one too uh, and then I think, like, probably if I had to pick a favorite episode, and this is partially just kind of from a, like, an editing perspective, I think one of the ones where I did one of my best work was the uh, Year in Review 2016, um, because we had so many different cut-ins, and yeah. I thought the, yeah. the format was kind of cool, and it was a, you know, I think it's a good one that if you don't want to point someone to, like, start on this episode and go forward, you can sort of say, like, hey, go and listen to the Year in Review 2016, and it might give you some ideas for which episode you might want to start on. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, if, if nothing else, so... I thought that one was pretty cool, but yeah, and I mean, it's been a really cool uh, journey here, getting to 100 over the course of three years, and I look forward to continuing on with you guys. Yeah. So, cool. and thank you, Backward Compatible listeners, for joining us for 100 episodes of the BackwardCompatible.com podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Doc. And until I abandon y'all for my solo Kung Fu Cinema <laughs> Chop Saki podcast, I'm Jeff. And we'll see you next time. We want you to write into the show, because dialogue makes everyone better. If you want to comment on this episode, ask a question, share some info, voice an opinion, or request a topic, send an email to inbox at backward-compatible.com, and we may feature you on a future episode of the podcast.
Thanks for listening. Until next time, stay compatible.